All right, ladies and gents, welcome to game number one in semifinal number one of Hidden Cup 3. Uh, we are going to look back at this tournament for years and years and years, so I'm just going to say uh, this has been incredible. The turnout has been unreal. The hype has been unreal. The quality of the gameplay has been unreal. And the preparation has been really, really solid. Many people think that Katyan Khan here could be the Canadian, could be Hera, who's had an amazing six months in Age of Empires, I'd say number two in the world, and is extremely good with his mezzo sieves, likes to pick green, you know, all the things are looking like it could be someone like Hera or maybe Leary. And Joan the Maid showed us in all of his rounds how good he was preparing. We didn't see as many nerdy micro moves, we didn't see as much speed or flair from him, Dave, but is always trying to get an edge, not with like necessarily the micro, but the prep. And he has gone for Vikings here in game number one. Yep, and there's another thing to look out for for Joe in the mid. What I've seen, he really likes to overboom, and he really likes to emphasize map control. Yeah. Um, so the later the game gets, I think the more it swings into his favor uh, yeah. from what I've seen so far. Once again, we've seen this Civ matchup, Mayans versus Vikings, and we've seen it with the Kachi and Khan player. Yep. I believe against, uh, was it Sheriff of Nottingham? No, no. If you remember, Kachan Khan picked Aztecs in the uh, quarterfinal no, against in Yodit. The first round, oh. In the first round, he picked Mayans and um, Sheriff picked Vikings, I think. I forget and at he this point. Rated him with, <laughs> he rated him with Eldorado Eagles. Oh, you're Vikings right. Vikings player yes. was pushing him. Yeah. And what that underlined in that game is that Vikings really need to fight in one spot. And I think Slam said it when you were casting. Yeah. You need to fight in one spot. And the Mayans, they just need to hit the Vikings from every angle and try and disrupt that eco. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, and we saw in the quarterfinal how Aztecs fared against Vikings. Uh, Katyan, he he picked his mezzo save. He loves his man at arm opening into archers. He played really, really clean and good with that. Uh, but the the Yodit moves with less crossbows and the boom into berserks worked really well. I just wonder. What is better to face off against Vikings? Is it Mayans or is it Aztecs? I almost feel like yeah, Joe and the Maid was probably thinking, yeah, it was going to be an Aztec pick here. And Kachan maybe learned his lessons from the, the round of 16 and went for Mayans. Mm, that's true, yeah. I mean, they're pretty, they're both a pretty decent pick yeah. in terms of sieves. Like, you, you, you have options with both Aztecs and Mayans, but I think Mayans have a slight edge. Yeah, definitely. Just because the Eagles are a little bit tankier. Um, you can switch into the plumed archers to deal with the berserks, etc. All right. Well, we've seen a lot of laming in this tournament. We have not seen any laming here. Uh, players have their boars. Players have their sheep. And to see Kachan coming forward, uh, Kachan Khan's map is good. Uh, he's got he's got a nice wood line. He's back berries. He has that gold, but he does have two golds, which are somewhat forward. You could say the same for Joan, though. They're they're even more forward. I like Actually, just Joan's one. map yeah. if he gets the walls down. If True. he gets the walls down here, he can potentially secure the secondary stone. I'm not sure he's going to get control of that primary one in the front. Yeah. Um, but he has his main gold in the back, got his deer in the back, has woodline options. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty good for a Viking boom here. Yeah, and it would look pretty good if you wanted to go for a Drush. We've seen a lot of, of early barracks, militia, and uh, play it out into the Castle Age. And I think if you do that, you maybe get your walls up, Dave, and... Do exactly what you said. And I'm wondering if Katyan... Uh, Katyan was clearly scouting. He's scouting big time. He scouted the front of the base and hung around there for a while. He was possibly looking for the barracks. Didn't see it. And now he's adding his own barracks. And this villager could... No, no, it's a it's a mine villager. It won't be attacked. Uh, Joe and the maid sees the barracks. So I think... Do you add your own barracks? Yeah, he's adding his own. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Does he be annoying? Yeah, he's going to be so annoying with the scout. Ah, ah yeah. Now he's leaving. Yep. Just also letting Joan know that that he, he knows. knows exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty. It's clearly obvious what Vikings is going to go for sure. in this matchup. Um, but you know, there's like a one percent chance Joan could mix it up <laughs> with a different strategy. Yeah. Now the Barrett position and the way that Joan is walling is definitely more passive yeah. and the reason for this, and this is actually a reason that Mayans can get so many walls up, Dave. Mayans always have loom at the start because they research that, and the Viking player won't have that. So the Viking player can't send a Vil to wall that area off, and the Eagle's just waiting. So 
uh, if you're Katyan, who's actually going to Feudal Age, so he yeah, wants to so go for Men at Arms. Men at Arms. Wow. Mm, this is going to be interesting because yeah. Joan's going to have a fully walled base here. Mm -hmm. Is Katyan going to go forward though? Because look at where Joan's stones are. It's true. He had denied the is stones. Is he going to come forward? Wow, that would be an interesting move if he does. Well. I wonder what Joan is thinking, because Joan spotted the barracks, but he is he does not know about the feudal age uptime. So he doesn't really he's not really aware. Best case scenario for Joan, because he's staying in Dark Age, is he will engage against these militia before they're upgraded. And Dave, I'm I'm with yeah. you. I think either you go for heavy man at arms and four villagers forward and your first tower goes in the berries and the rest go on the stones and farms, or you go I'm for one thinking... range, possibly. Like I'm thinking, if you if you go for a forward and it's it looks too late now, mm -hmm. I don't I don't think he's gonna come forward here. You're on the stone anyway. Oh no, never mind. I said it, and I think he is. Is he going forward? He's sending two villagers out right now. It might just be to build the range though. Maybe. Yeah. Well, what's well, weird to me is I'm how Katyan go men at arms. Yeah, go you're ahead. not really getting any benefit of it because you know Jones walled already. True. But you make four militia to not get men at arms. You have to get it right. And attack the walls, possibly. Joan is just now getting loom. He's I think he's coming at home. forward, dude. Just two villagers Shot. forward, yeah. It's taking some real time, though. It's taking some real time. So the risk of sending four villagers is you have more villagers walking, less villagers collecting resources. However, if you send only two villagers, you're also not applying enough pressure or as quick or enough pressure or sorry as much pressure I, i'm still not awake <laughs> you'll get there yeah you'll um, get there <laughs> against joan now i said the best tower spot is always on the berries and it is it's either I, the berries or farms because what joan I think wants is between food and the gold. stone the stone and the farms is a good one that one's like a kind of hybrid between yeah all true three. um and i mean joan's gonna see that does he come back with his drush no he's just gonna harass the gold a little bit mm-hmm He'll be in Feudal Age in time to stop a potential second tower. Yeah. You won't deny that one. And that one really only harasses one farm. You know what really bothers me, Dave? Is the fact that Joan has not taken his four deer in the back. Well, Joan just killed all the deer from Kachi. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, why not take your own deer is my question. Because he'll TC back there, and then he'll have, he'll have good food. Uh, I'm just concerned for him right now because he only has 500 food. And if it's 500 food, he needs 300 more to be able to go to the next stage. I don't think he can fast castle with this. I think Katyan will like this. Oh, counter counter tower on the farms to prevent him from pushing in. I mean, the archers are on the way. They won't be able to do too much damage. Yeah. But you're right. He's going to be delayed in that feudal age. Won't get to castle age fast enough. I, li I like the use of the scout here for Joe and the Maid. Uh, he snipes an archer and now gets out of there. Also a lot of idle time for Katyan, but here's the deal. When you go for Drush Fast Castle, if you're delayed by an extra minute or two, the, the other player is going to be just fine. The other player's been adding farms. They've also taken some map control and they're creating military before you. So, I swear, four villagers on the deer and a mill, and he's on his way to Castle Age already. I'm really surprised. Maybe he didn't see them, Dave. He sees one. Is it possible he didn't see the rest of them? I mean, if there's one, there's more. Oh my god, yeah, oh. it is possible. I just checked his vision. Oh, oh god, he didn't see them. I mean, the deer's walking around a little bit. Well, that hurts. And that is a really good tower now for Katya and I like that archer being annoying. I don't know why he's pulling it back now. Uh, maybe a risk of the house going down and the tower going up anyways. Yeah. I like Katya's position at the moment, man. Uh, it's just about how the eco is behind this when you send Vils forward, but I mentioned it. His eco's been stronger because he only sent two. Starting the archer production, the militia are pretty much useless now for Joan. I do like how the militia, though, he's kept them alive. A lot of players would have tossed those away. True. And what he's done by keeping them alive is keep all the four of those archers at home. Yeah. Currently. Yep, good point. Well, uh, I'd love to see Katyan build another tower on the left wood line now. Like what the man at arms have, have applied so much pressure it's put Joe and the maid on the back foot. You do have Viking economy, and he did now find the deer. <laughs> so and that's good. Look at his resources. Yeah. It's actually looking pretty good right now. Vikings you, are insane. You click up in this position, you've got a couple archers to defend. I mean that tower is not gonna do a whole lot. You can always switch to the wood line on the right, which he's doing right now. 
think it's possible he could even deny that tower if he sends the archers forward. No fletching if, yeah, yet. If he, if he goes around the other side, maybe. Well, but there's a, there's another tower there. Yeah, from Kachin, true. So it's kind of risky. I thought he might and run you know, around. You saw the archers from Kachin, so you know that they're going to be coming at some point. Mm -hmm. So if if I were Kachin, I would send those archers around to that wood line on the right first. True. Because you know that he shifted his focus, right? Yeah. He towered the one clump of wood. He can't go to the one at the front, so there's only one option for him. Yep. And that's at the right-hand side. And if I were um, Joan, I'd maybe start thinking about switching into skirmishers right about now. I think, Joan, when you're halfway to Castleage, you could even try and just go for really fast crossbow. And and then go for a counter, and then Kachan will, will struggle to continue his push, too. I, I think what is good about Kachan's pressure is that there's definitely not going to be a booming Viking player. He, he's nope. used his stone for a tower, so he doesn't have the stone for another town center. His economy is much weaker than it would have otherwise been if this pressure wouldn't have come in. And I love these towers. Oh, but he's now purchased a counter tower. Jones he still hasn't left his base. Good quick walls around that outpost. Heads up play. If he keeps some archers there too, he could garrison the archers in the tower. Yeah. A lot more arrow fire. But I think he might... I don't know if he'll deny this one. Yeah, I think still having the other woodline is huge. And you mentioned Katyan being able to maybe go over there. Hasn't scouted the woodlines being chopped. Killed one forward villager. Can he kill the other one? She's moving! Oh, and she... What?! <laughs> Wait a second. It goes up. Well, the man at arms are going to go down. They're useless now. The tower will delay. And here comes the counterattack for Joan the Maid. And still, if you look at the resources for Kachan, he doesn't have enough. But Dave, he's gone full armored skirms. This is super impressive. Yeah. He's reading all of the all of the plays from Joan. Yeah, and I he's think re he's reacting before it even happens. <laughs> yeah. So very nice. Yeah, you have all the upgrades you can have in Feudal Age right now, Kachan. So you, you got to be careful. Having armor there is is huge. You have four Pierce armor. Now, the, once the crossbows get Bodkin, they'll be a bit better against that. But Bodkin hasn't come in yet. Uh, I really wow. like how Jones put some crossbows in that one counter tower at the front. And then as soon as he got um, Fletching, he could range the tower from ah, Kachan. Yeah. Now he has access to his stones if he wants to go back out there or maybe TC. That location, wall it up maybe. Hmm, I right wonder now, I if Joan will go for a siege between, workshop. Yeah, and walling between those two wood lines too would be the play maybe. Yeah. Good. Oh, he's sending a villager forward. Okay. This is Max. It it seems like Max, but it's also the play in this situation when your opponent is probably on their way to Castle Age and they're going to be going for skirms. You could use some siege. A nice micro from Kachan. We've seen this throughout Hidden Cup 3. Yep. This is we have a nerd against a strategist in the semifinal. He's and it's five plus two range versus just five range straight up. Yep. <laughs> so he's missing two range and he still wanted to engage that. That was nice. But the resources for Kachan, everything's looking so clean. So he can afford to get crossbow. He can afford to get elite skirm. He could maybe soon build a castle too and go plumes. But if the siege is here, it could be so, so risky for Kachan over the next 60 seconds. Does he seconds. see that siege? I think does he, he will. See it? He doesn't see it yet, but he does now. Joan kind of let him back there. Skirmisher is engaging. Good micro good for micro both. Good micro for both. Yeah. Jinx. <laughs> there's going to be a lot <laughs> of that. This is going to be a good day, dude. Yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's going to be right a lot of that. Of Ooh, this is a bit sloppy from Joan. He just lost two crossbows to that tower back at home on the left side. Probably should have sent them into the tower and uh, continued with the tower war. What do you do now if you're Kachan? I think, you know what? Kachan's a type of player which might just try and micro down the Maganels, but... Oh, he's lost oh, the villager on the wood! Bills. That's a good position for Joan, and we saw this. Remember the um, Vikings versus Aztec war? Yep. Where the Aztecs were heavier in military. Oh. But they couldn't go to the other player's base because they had to come, keep coming back to address the raids. Dave, four crossbows Castle. for Joan. He he probably knows that there's another wood line being chopped. This is something yep. Kachan didn't do in Feudal Age. So uh, this, if he gets to that wood line, this is going to be really difficult for Kachan. He'll be running Scorpion all around. Two for Joan. Elite Ooh, skirm, splits though. around the scorpion. Wow. Yeah, I wonder also if Joan is ever going to add a second town center. There's some real concerns there. Oh, he just did. 
<laughs> okay, he's got a second town center. We answered that question. Those crossbows on the right, you, you talked about them before. Mm -hmm. That wood line is so exposed over there. Yep. And he's just keeping them there. He's like, yeah, I'll see where your army is, and then I'll hit you while you're distracted. But there's there almost go. almost so much you can do, right? You, you have yeah. you have two TCs. You have the army that's really important to the north. So I think he just now is going to click them there. And this is going to draw Kachan back. And Kachan is currently behind in villagers in game number one. Oh, he noticed it right away, dude! Wow. He researched Town Watch a moment ago, and will he lose Look at that, that bill? bill? What? <laughs> Perfect angle. Yeah. The angles, guys. Well, now the crossbows will probably go down because Joan's so focused, right? He's focused on the Maganel push, and that was great job from Kachan. Didn't lose a single villager with that quick reaction. So Town Watch will do for you there. Uh, now two crossbows from Joan the Maid behind this wood line. He he's pressuring those wood lines big time. He doesn't know about the castle, and he finds out the hard way now. Oh my god, that castle! That's, uh, that's so many oh! crosses, dude. That's five crossbows! How did that... That's, that's so unlucky, too. It is. <laughs> like, the castle... Normally, it'd kill it one at a time. No, it killed the, almost the entire army there. Here comes a Mangonel, too, from Kachan. This could be a big, big fight here. Scorpion goes down, Dave. It's three Mangonels against one and some skirmishers, so... I, I know Kachan's Good gonna micro. have some... Wow. Yeah, I know Kachan's gonna have belief in his abilities, but that was always gonna be tough. Best case scenario there, uh -oh. he get... Uh-oh, 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 Jones base, Jones base! Oh, wow, uh -oh. the plumed archers are here! That town center will be denied! Great job from Kachan, what a close game! Oh my goodness, it was looking so good for Joan the Maid, and then all of a sudden he ran into that castle, lost five crossbows, and now, tried to place the TC forward... Lost to Maganel. Lost to Maganel as well, so maybe if, if Kachan gets another kill... Dave, it's 56 he, villagers versus 50. So close. He's getting ballistics, but, like, where's his army at? Yeah. Where are the crossbows at? Does he have skirmishers on the way? Like... This forward... These forward buildings are so max. Forward stable now with Vikings? Uh-oh. Oh, the micro! That's sick. Yeah. Six shots from both players again. Those are like instantaneous clicks on the Mangonels. I I love the pressure that Kachan has put on though, and, and we maybe we'll see a lead skirm now for Joan. Uh, it is Killing on the, the Mangonel. way. Oh wow! I sniped two villagers and the mango. No, Dave. There's two golds here for Kachan. Uh, he, he needs to free it up, and he gets a Mangonel kill. This is back and forth. It's so close. Oh my god! The level of play that they have brought to this it's game is insane. insane. Oh game my one. goodness. Yeah, game one. <laughs> game one, boys. Like, I'm not warmed up yet as the caster, but the players obviously had some warm-up games. Unbelievable. Here come the plumes, and if I know Kachan, he's gonna get real close to this Mangonel. Yeah. And just micro-nerd it down, see? Yep. Take the oh, take the repair bills and then run away with your Mangonel and just micro it down. Well played. Now there is some worry because the Siege Workshop's still there. And now Elite Skirm should be coming forward for Joan. So if it's Elite Skirm Maganel, Elite Skirm Maganel's pretty much what Kachan has had, with the exception of having some plumed archers. And it is 66 villagers for versus 57. So Viking Eco versus Mayan Eco, both extremely strong. Uh, we'll see who maybe gets to the Imperial Age faster in this one. I love how Kachan is placing all his, his all of his like irrelevant military mm -hmm. in different areas. So he's got the Skirms on the right. He's got the archers near the tower. Yeah. And he's got men at arms in potential places True. where Joan the Maid would expand to place TCs. Yep. It's very, very nice. But at the same time, Joan the Maid has this forward. He's got some knights queued up. He's got another Mangonel queued up. Like, he's not letting Kachin forget about that position. Yeah, and I just, I, I almost don't know what area Joan wants to pressure in right now. And Kachan might be thinking the same thing. Kachan tries to get a counter in. And there's defense for it on either side. You see the skirms being cleared out on the right. And then if if Kachan wants to counter attack, then we might see the Maganels and Knights come in. And I don't think Kachan uh, has scouted the stable. He is not. And he's definitely not going to be expecting Viking Knights. That stable oh, also, Max. max uh, sorry, al also, Maid. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, using the Maganel against this tower right now, so he will clear up that wood line Big and get access to stone. I don't think I don't think Joan wants to fight that against plumes and elite skirms. Not yet. I don't think you have to fight that either. Well, he just got armor and he has ballistics, right? And of course, Kachan the nerd out micros ballistics, and he still has control of the golds, Dave. So 
I actually think that's a relatively good fight to take, but I wonder if Katyan is going to build another castle soon. And I wonder where, where that castle is going to be. If they get to the back onto that gold, potentially, it'd be a big deal. But I think green will just, like, make the nerd walls. Yeah. Still a lot of clicking, though. There's currently six villagers that are idle because of this. And oh, then you have to dead. click them back to work, right? Yeah, look how much clicking. It, it's impressive, and you need to do it here. But just the fact that that uh, Joe and the Maid has forced this is huge. The plumes come back, the knights... I think they, they should just run around, Dave, and and mm -hmm. remain a presence in the back of Kachan's base. I, at this point, with the knights back there, he knows the plumes are back there. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see him go out and maybe make some walls on the left-hand side. True, yeah. Make some walls maybe on the right-hand side, just secure, because you know the plumes are going to be running around. You know your weakness is going to be raiding from plumes or eagles later in the game. Imp. And Jonah's on the way to Imp. Now, this is interesting. Impressive. Kachan's built a lot of outposts. And he found yep. a three-tile gold on that right side. So there's no shortage of resources for him, at least for now, until this main gold and four-tile gold become uh, important to him. And now Imperial Age for Kachan, Dave. They're both going to be in the Imperial Age soon. Both same villagers, oh, too. Incredible. But we mentioned, would Aztecs or Mayans be the preferred opponent for Joan the Maid? And I feel like Mayans, with... with just as good archers, uh, also having Siege Ram, having more mobile archers. I feel like they're a really good match against Vikings in the Imperial Age. Oh! God, I can't believe... Sorry. Oh, my... yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> where are you looking? <laughs> I was looking at the raids on the left, but there's so much going on right now. Yeah. He's trying to kill that monk, and he, he does way too many units. Just skirms, though, right? Just skirms. But... Like, with all of that going on, Joan sent a Mangonel and the Scorpion to the wood line at the north. Yeah, see that. And Green pulled his villagers away before they even got there. Like, he's paying attention to every single aspect on the map. Crazy. And another castle going down on that main gold from him. Hmm. Where is he going to be exactly? That's good. Yeah, that's going to free up the castle. However, Dave, there's two Mangonels, and there's also... And there's villagers. Uh, wait. Does he want to Does castle the that? hill? He doesn't see the castle. He does not see the castle going up. Well, he'll see he he'll see the castles up here in a moment. And be... He's got battering ramps, though. He's got battering ramps in the, oh, in the siege workshop. Oh, that castle. I feel the like... castle's going to be so good. It's going to go up. I feel like a lot of players would castle the hill. Yeah, castle the hill. Mm -hmm. That's such a better castle, because then it's really difficult for Katyan to win a Trebor. And Dave, I love the fact that Joan the Maid is patrolling up this hill, actually, because he's trading versus the ranged units, and he'll Siege also workshop. get to know if Katyan's going to commit to going ranged units, or if Katyan's going to go eagles. And we've seen Vikings go berserks and work really well against Mezosivs. Well, Eagle is on the way, and there's a Siege Workshop on the right-hand side, too, so Joan's going to kind of pressure both sides, yep. split the army from Katyan. Yep. And I think he can actually win this fight up the hill. Yeah, he's going to win the fight up the hill. And remember, this will tell him my opponent Eldorado is not going for archers anymore. So that there's actually a concern here for Joan. I love the forward castle, and I love the fact he's going to trip down this castle. Wall up, man. Wall up. But Dave, castles, they're not important to the Mayan player if they research no. Eldorado. And they're going eagles. So elite eagles, uh, we, we saw it before from Kachan, could just raid the economy for Joan the Maid. And I, I think I see, yeah, infantry armor is queued up now from Joan. Okay. So he's going to make the switch into infantry, but I I think he needs to wall right now. Like, just wall your economy, make it safe. Yep. You know the eagles are going to be coming. I think it's got to be champion, too. I don't think you can go for berserk. You only have one castle and it's forward. Ooh, the skirms on the right-hand side heading towards that goal, but also the ram push on that castle. Yeah. So the castle's going to go down, uh, meaning Kachan cannot take the gold. And that castle's got to go down, right? There's a treb there, too. Seems like it's going to be close. Joan just needs to prep the defense for the eagles, and he will see the eagles now as the eagles dive in he's, underneath he's the rams. Stone. Ooh. Kachan is out of stone. That castle's going down. 100% going down. Yep. And that's still, that's a huge concern for Kachin, because now, how does he secure that gold? Yeah. He's got the eagles to push this force back, but the gold is going to be awfully exposed. And Joan has skirmishers in the back that Kachin's clearing up right now. Yeah, is Kachin, what's good about Kachin, though, you just patrol one eagle for all the skirmishers and you're fine. And, and you could say the, the same, like, here come the eagles, they're going to raid. Yeah. 
Nice quick Whoa! Walls. Amazing quick walls from Joan. He just can't fight these eagles right now. I think this will be a big swing for the Mayan player, Dave. Uh, the forward castle wall, was man. good, but yes, stone walls, you called it. You've got to protect yourself. Defensive castles can work, though. It needs a yeah, lot of them. With eagles with El Dorado, like 100 HP. Yeah. And now they just got the final armor upgrade. Eight pierce armor and 100 HP. Like, this, they can run under castles all day. And I'm seeing so many exposed wood lines, so many farmers that the eagles can hit. Yeah. We could easily see the vil count for blue drop by by dozens. A two-handed swordsman it takes so much time to get all the infantry technologies if you're going champions. But eagles, you just get two techs, you get the attack upgrades and defense upgrades, and then you spam. And also, green is completely untouched now, Dave. And he can actually take his gold because Joan the Maid can't pressure him with anything. It's amazing how many times I've seen this exact situation play out yeah. in pro games where just the Mayan player is slightly behind and then they get to Imperial Age, they get the Eagles. Yep. And the other player hasn't walled. Yeah. Yeah, I think th that's why the forward castle was so intriguing to me because we could make arguments for why it was good, but also why it could have been bad. Imagine if he would have just built it home uh, or used the stone to stone wall for himself. I think the Eagles with 100 HP will even uh, destroy the long swordsman here. Which are, it's what Blue is trying to get into to counter this. Look, there's eagles everywhere from Katjan. Look at yeah. the vil count now, the idol count now for Joan. Can he come back from this? I think he can if uh, if Green tosses away too many. So eagles versus longswords, not a fight you want to take. Eagles versus two-handed, not definitely not a fight you want to take. Yeah. Um, and eagles are very gold heavy. True. So if Joan can clear up these initial raids, maybe stabilize his eco a little bit, and then pressure, I think the place he needs to pressure is the main gold from green, and that secondary right beside him. Oh, but man, if Katyan plays it properly, the eagles have more mobility, and Katyan, we said, is the fast player. Look how many groups he has. Everywhere you look, there are eagles going into the economy. He's going to clear up that castle. He just cleared out trebuchets. I, I just don't think Joan the Maid is going to have the time. This... This Kachan player is a player who loves Mesosivs on Arabia, and you can see why. It's amazing how quickly he's moving oh his units. Oh my god, Castle on the right-hand side too, on that hill from Kachan. Yeah. As he slaughters and villagers with eagles. look at all eagles. the green everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, th it's, and, it's too much. Yeah. GG. Man, it was a close game, but Kachan weathered the storm. Impressively, in fact, because he didn't have his main gold, he didn't have his four tile gold. And the score is 1-0 in the first semifinal. Dave, what do you think about this? It's hard to say, but I actually mentioned it in the... Um, I think it was when we saw Kachan as Aztecs versus Yodit as Vikings. What do you think if instead of building the forward castle, you build that castle on the left next to your stone, you build walls from that castle to the wood line, keep this castle in the middle, and then get a castle up on the right, and then yeah. play it into late game against Mayans, going berserks and skirmishers yeah i think you got to play safe in this situation like i yeah. was saying it was it's a predictable swing right and you, you have to know that but sometimes <clears throat> players get tunnel vision true where they're i don't think joe necessarily had tunnel vision here but he was super focused on what he was doing at the time like yeah raiding the left hand side raiding the right hand side getting that castle down the ram push etc i think you got to take the time to just even wall up. You don't even need to put the castle there. Just stonewall. But also, how sick was that from Kachan to find that three-tile gold? Because if yeah, he that didn't find that useful. three-tile gold, I he don't know if out. he would have been able to produce that. Yeah. So that could have been what Joan was thinking. He, he knew the importance of those golds, and I think that's why he went all in for that area. The game sense from Kachan to raid was amazing, and Kachan wins game one Arabia. Uh, we've said that in virtually every single set that Kachan has played in Hidden Cup 3. It's a player who is very quick, so it suits him. Now, uh, game two will be on one of the home maps of Joan, and we mentioned before the series started, Joan didn't fr d didn't pick Cup, and Cup was what was so impressive. He had this strategy, and again, Katyan would have never seen it because these games were played before today. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised he doesn't have Cup, but he has high tide. He has El Dorado, and he and has banned, hideout. It's important to notice that for El Dorado, he has banned Chinese. Hmm. So Chinese 
basically either Chinese or Indians are considered the best probably on that map. But yeah. Slopes is also game four. So maybe you wouldn't want to go for Indians as uh, as Kachian on El Dorado because you want to save them for Slopes. Do you remember I what Yoda picked? Joan is, Yoda picked Khmer. And I think Joan is going to go for a unique civilization pick too. Yeah. I, I don't know if he's going to go for Khmer, but we'll see. This should be This should be interesting. All right, game number two. Let's see what happens. You've got to oh, be kidding I'm super me. Excited. I'm super excited. <laughs> You've got yes. to be kidding me. Oh, we have the meta nerd in Katyan Khan. He has picked Indians here. He thinks Indians is a beastly pick. And Joan the Maid has gone for Incas. And you know what's funny about this? In the quarterfinal, Katyan Khan globally banned Incas. And now he's up against Incas because he didn't globally ban it this time. Will we see Vil rushing from Joan the Maid and Towers? At least Towers, Dave. Oh, at least Towers. So basically, anyone who doesn't know Incas, their villagers get the blacksmith upgrades for um, infantry units. So they can do an extremely nice uh, villager rush. Yep. Their houses are, are 10 populations, so that's good. And then their towers are cheaper. Yeah. Which is also a nice nice little bonus. Uh, also, Incas start with the llama. I don't know why Joan the Maid killed the llama. <laughs> and then he's just he, leaving it to rot. It's fair play, right? That's a handicap. That's true. He wants to, he wants to nerf himself, I guess. Yeah. Uh, he, here's what I have to say about this. Well, actually, before I get down to the Civ strategy, I should point out other aspects of this map. There's two tiles of gold, and there's two tiles of stone close to each player's base, and the rest of the gold and stone is in the center, and it's always visible as well. So I'm thinking this strategy is definitely about surrounding the middle and, and making dude. towers if you're Joan. Also, dude, let's actually let's think about the Civ matchup from Joan's perspective. Okay. So he banned Chinese. He knows the best next best Civ for this map is Indians. True. What civilization counters Indians pretty good? Hmm. Would be Incas, right? Would be Incas, true. If you get like, to the problem is, Indians should have the better economy. But if you are yeah. able to defend from that, then definitely Incas. And the other aspect of this is that Indians is a very strong sieve for slopes. Game four, and that's set. So that's happening regardless. And now Kachan Khan won't have that. So Kachan Khan will be at a slight disadvantage there, at least in most pros' eyes. Um, but Dave, if you're going to defend from a tower rush and a vill rush, if you're losing stones and losing gold, normally the focus is all on food. And so when you have Indians who have the tremendous bonus... <gasps> oh, that was close! <laughs> man. I was getting nervous, dude. We saw it yesterday, all right? Yeah, Joan already oh, did it, man. but... uh. Oh, look at what he's doing with the scout, too, with the deer push. Where? Joan was ah, pushing in his deer, and Katim was setting his scout right in front of that. Yeah. Trying to be super annoying. And now he's taking the hills against it as Jones luring the boar. Both players, though, on top of that. But yeah, I think I think what I want to get at here is I don't know if a Vil Rush works on a map where you can't deny food. Like, the Vil Rush on Arabia works really well because your opponent it can't farm properly. Mm -hmm. But on a map where you have fishing ships, I feel like Kachan's going to be able to field a lot of scouts, and scouts are still going to be better than villagers in that scenario. So... I'm I'm really curious to see what Joan the Maid has planned because can you deny they got to know? Hmm. True. Because there, there's only so many wood options on this map. Yeah. Interesting. Dude, I have never see. seen this, guys. I mean, this has been the theme here. If Joan loses today, everyone will have loved his participation in this tournament because of the way that he prepared for the games. And uh, I I personally and people can probably sense it. I've I've really been rooting for Joan because of that uh, as the host of the tournament i really want people to prepare and we've seen that so it's so cool to see the clash as well dave to have someone who's extremely fast extremely quick and extremely meta in kachan but then have someone like joan the maid who if we knew who he was and if it was always arabia might not have a chance for his kachan actually make it to the semi-final look at kachan instead of pushing the deer he's his scout is just wandering around Jones' base like, what are you up to? What are you up yeah, to? What are true. you up to? <laughs> like, true. He needs to figure out the strategy quick, right? Yeah. yeah. Very good point. Scouting all around. You can see the middle of the map as well. So usually that would give you an indication of like when players are sending villagers forward. But unfortunately for Kachan, 
they're kind of like the line between the bases isn't through the middle. <laughs> That's true. You go around it a little bit. Yeah. I see a barracks for Jones. So this tells me maybe the standard man at Auction's arms play. See it. Yeah. Amazing work with the scout. Amazing work with the scout, especially when you're up against Incas, like you said, Dave. You don't want to be surprised by this. Both players doing it, though. <laughs> Joe and the mate also has his eagle around. Like, what are you up to, buddy? Scouting the front of the base. Knows where the gold and stone is. It's in the same spot for Joan. That could be rough. And here come the militia now, and so it will be man-at-arms. My question is, will it also be a forward? It's gotta uh, be. Villagers coming forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ask the question, he answers it. Yeah. Fair it's, enough. It's, it's gotta be. You don't pick Incas to just sit at home. How many fishing so, ships? Three, four, four green and three for blue. Do you get the armor first? Do you get the attack first? Always armor. Always armor. Attack yeah. is is tempting, but when towers are going up, you need the armor so your villagers don't don't get slaughtered. Immediate blacksmith with three villagers. Wow. So those will probably go to the stone afterwards, and it it'll be really interesting. You talked about it. What resource do you deny? Because usually you go after food. Yep. So that it stops their villager production and it stalls their uh, army production. I think he's going to deny this gold and then go after wood lines. Yeah, well, I, I love what Kachan did. Started play. Oh, oh, this could be rough oh, he's for Kachan. In. It's, he's in and he's getting the armor too. Once he gets the armor for the men at arms. Oh, buddy. Oh, he knew it was coming, but he couldn't prepare. He lost one villager. Oh, disaster zone. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's so many villagers coming out here. Are these, he just going to rush it down, Dave? Is he going to try and stop it right here, right now? Inca Vils, though. And Inca Man at Arms. Another villager goes down for green. The villagers won't die, man. For blue. Oh, and all the villagers survive. Oh, this could be a quick game, too. Oh, what a strategy, man. <laughs> and that's such an unfortunate position for the gold from Kachin to the hill is in Joan's position, is in Joan's favor. Yeah. Oh, man. The towers continue to shoot villagers. Now, Kachin's doing a good job here, garrisoning his villagers, but you can only do but this for so long. His villagers are getting really weak, though. Yeah. And, like, there's one under the tower that's on 2 HP. He's got his gather point on the TC set to up there. Yeah, and now all you do if you're Joan the Maid is attack Green's Vills. Check this out. Check this out. Watch how watch how quickly the villagers will die. For, wait, you know what, Dave? There's Kachin, still the fishing ships behind all this. Keep that in mind. Yep. And Kachin's doing an excellent job with the villager micro, too. Yeah. It's, it's, He's saving as many as he can. I'm surprised he isn't dead yet. Let's put it that like, way. Like the angles on the his villagers running away too. Yeah, He's saving really good. them all. And he, he ends but... up taking out the tower. Now now Joan needs to get the weak villagers back. He needs to send yep. more units forward. The Nobaru rush is when you send more villagers forward. Yeah, get that weak villager out of there. He's getting more men at arms in the fray, and they do have the armor. Dude, the micro so from Joan be... is so much worse though. Yeah. It's so yeah. much slower from Joan. This is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. But he's still like, it doesn't matter with Incas, he just got a kill. <laughs> it doesn't matter, the villagers are so tanky. He's sending one back on one HP, he's sending another one, there's two on one HP, one of them's gonna die. Yeah, lost one, and the quick walls from Kachan! He saves the villager, what a play! That's insane. That's actually, that's actually broken. And now he makes a gate. He's gate, he's gonna trap him in. Dude, he's like, get out of my town, man. Get out of my what town, and another quick wall from Kachan Khan! Maybe narrowing down who this player could be for people who didn't already have an idea. That was yeah, incredible. She wasn't going anywhere, dude. <laughs> she was stuck. And now Scout's on the field from Kachin. He somehow, I think it's because of the fish. He had the uh, the food production yep. to sustain Scout's. But look at his fish. Yeah. There's a fire ship now from Joan the Maid. He actually doesn't have a house, Kachin. So he can't make his fire ship. So he will take some losses or at least lose HP on the fishing ships. But again, he seems to micro the weak fishing ships away when need be. So yep. good job there. Interesting uh, he made... He, it's funny seeing Spearman against uh, Mesosiv too. Or uh, South American Civ. I'm sorry, YouTube. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He wants something to attack there. I yeah, think, and, exactly. and something to micro. And and I, I think if that, stra if that happens on any other map, it's GG. We go to game number three and Joe and the Maid is winning. But All it, these fish are weak. All of the fishing ships are weak. Oh, how many go down? One oh. just went down. Two. There's gonna, probably going to be three before Two. fire ship gets out. Come on, Joan. Go to the north, man. There's more fish. He spots... <laughs> oh, boy. We saw the APM difference there a little bit.
But he still got the fishing ships, Dave. And now, Kachan Khan is attacking the town center. What are you doing, man? He wants the, yeah. he wants the llama, I guess. Well, the spearmen, oh. <laughs> the spearmen are basically like, you know, they're just a confidence booster for Kachan yeah. at this point. Because they're not doing any damage to the Vils. They're not doing any damage to the Eagles. They're just wow. bodies on the field. It's 35 eco versus 29. So... Uh, I, maybe Joan, as he was losing the fights with the micro, he was like, alright, whatever, I've killed a few vills, I'm now gonna kill your fish. Yep. And, uh, he's making a switch into some eagles, and some spears. And he's got, he's making more fish of his own, too, which is a bit concerning, considering green has two docks down now, but now, okay, now he's made it another fire ship, so he should be able to defend. That's a lot of fishing ships Joan has added, yeah. Yep. As he sniped Eco fish and now needs to defend. Him. 38 eco units versus 29 now. You know, it's a nice touch though, and this is the first Feudal Age eco upgrade coming in from both players now. Double bid axe for Joan. <laughs> Dude, you gotta get, you gotta get the armor. <laughs> like, you gotta make eagles, yeah. you know? <laughs> but what's interesting is Indians have that shorefish bonus still, and Kachan built a mill in the back. So that's a lot of food there. That's 400 food from shorefish, maybe 600 if he takes that, and also has the deer. That was one part of this map that I felt like was really important, but it's the first time I've seen it used. I want to see a demo for the scouts again, so you can see it. You can actually see it this time. No, live. I saw it, man. I saw it. I watched that back. He didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Oh, man. One village, you're going down. Yep. Good micro from Kachan. He really needs yep. to get a few more, but it's going to be tough with these spears out here. Yeah, he, he probably needs the attack upgrade too to, to fight effectively uh -oh. against these Inca Vils. He sees that weak one though on the stone. Well, speaking of weak villagers, Dave, both players on trying to line. save their Vils. I think that villager will survive. Uh, j no, he's got the attack bonus. If he pulls back the eagle wow. or the spirit and lets the eagle attack it, yeah. Well played. 450 food for Joan, 100 food for Kachyan. That is That's Jones? a huge difference. And, yeah, you were, we were talking about how Incas do well in the late game against Indians. If Indian eco doesn't get rolling, yeah, this looks pretty good for Joan because his eco is looking real stable. And now he's going forward to secure the middle. Yeah, you know what's what's interesting, though? While there's more food in the bank for Joan, Kachan has double the amount of villagers on food currently. So he has a oh, more has stable economy. Yeah, so I think the uptimes might be really close. Yeah. See if Kachan Jones can avoid the spears. Avoid the spears, pick off some villagers, but you know what? Mezosivs normally rely more on gold, so if you secure the middle with some towers and go into full eagles, it can be tough for Indians to know what to do about that. What a close game, but I'm, I'm just surprised that Kachan survived. Uh, it, it was yep. only because of the fish. And it was only because he sent so many villagers out. He noticed that weak one on the stone earlier. He came back for it. Yep. It's so this hard is... on this map to keep weak villagers protected because you can't build farms next to the town center, yeah. which is and what you would, would normally do. With Inca Vils, with that armor, you would think, oh, I'm, I'm pretty safe here against scouts, but Kachin's mic micro has been amazing, and both players on the way to the castle age now. Yep. All right. So I just noticed Joan was defending his fishing ships on the right side. I'm wondering if players... He's defending in the south as well. I, I really wonder if players are going to go for the war galley tech. I think it would it would make sense for both of them yeah. because there's so many fishing ships. Yeah, and they can they can notice from the score like water boosts your score so much. Yeah. So Jones got to be thinking, okay, I've got a good score. I know how much damage I've done to his eco. He must have remade fishing ships. Yep. Oh. Like he must. That spear oh, gets nice a kill. Spearman. And do you see the tech coming in in the barracks for Kachan? Yep. Interesting stuff. It's gonna go into long swords. Beautiful micro there from Kachan who snipes Great another off. villager. These scouts have gotten so much value. Usually yep. you wouldn't think about scouts getting value versus Incas, but they have. And I I love the little things too. I love how Joan even has his two weak eagles garrisoned in the tower to heal them up. Wow. Yeah. This is gonna use those later. And he's adding a third barracks, so this is gonna be an all-in eagle play from him. Very tough to stop this play, but Kachin sees it coming. Supplies, Dave! He's getting supplies! That means that means he's gonna make more than 10, because it's not worth it if you don't. So he's getting supplies. Yep. He has tons of food, too, so he might be able Jones to make a lot too. of these. 
What do you do in Jones' position? Slingers. Do you just go for raids? I think you go or do you go slingers? Well, yeah, okay. I mean, you do both, I think. I think you prep slingers. Archery range. Right away after he sees that archery range. Yep. So, archery ranges. Incas have slingers, unlike Mayans. Uh, unlike any Civ in the game. And uh, that is like a hand cannon in the Castle Age. Very good against long swords, and eagles have the mobility, Dave. I know that Kachan's fast. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Look at Green's. Okay, so Joan is over there with a fire ship. He sees the villagers on the fish. I know. Sees the villagers on the farms, and now he's sending eagles over. And oh my god, Kachan's gonna lose so many here. Yeah, he's a nerd, but he can't wall out eagles. This is this is insane. Uh, hello, and eagles. Were you on sand ground? Hello? Well, I think the damage has been done in multiple areas. Yeah. Lots of idle time. So many villagers went down there. It's 46 economy versus 34, Dave. I'd love to the see problem. that war galley switch for uh, for Joan. Just clean up the fish, and then you pretty much have the eco lead entirely. Yep. Men at arms, long swords get a bonus versus eagles. So they're very, very good, but the problem is they're slow. Yep. So the eagles can just run circles around them, and then when he really needs to fight for a position, he's got the slingers coming up, coming up right now, and they can sit on this hill. Sit on Green the wood won't line have a wood too. Line. Yeah. Green won't have a wood line. He'll have to go back to the one in the south, but that's super exposed. And it's in a position where he really needs to push too. I think he it's, really it's... needs to push. It, it's so interesting to me how Kachan banned Incas in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Didn't globally ban Incas here, and then Joan the maid's like, "All right, thank you. I like this sieve for this." Such impressive play from Joan too. Dude, I mean Kachan. Think... Kachan has played so well. How many vills did he kill with scouts? Like four. Yeah. Yep. Jeez. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. It just doesn't matter because Joan did so much damage early. He consolidated behind that. Mm -hmm. He got on water first, which I think is a, a huge uh -oh. deal in this game. Uh-oh. The quick walls fail, and the tower is probably going to go down here once the slingers take care of the men. Wow, the slingers are insane, man. Get him closer to the tower. Get him closer. Get him oh, closer. Man. You're losing all you slingers, dude. Wow, well, whatever. More eagles You're are on the way. <laughs> He doesn't even care. Is is he Tootins? Why does how is Green hitting all of these? I think two slingers is enough for man at arms. Probably. Fifty two kills versus thirty six deaths. Down, yeah. It's once the tower goes down, it's over. Oh! He's going for the YOLO play in the middle! What? Kachin, he's trying to get back into the game, boys! Oh man, and now but Joan Joe reacted! Can see this. <laughs> this isn't gonna work. Joan Very reacted much. and he's building towers, Dave! It's gonna be a doubt castle. Doubt confirmed. Oh, you know, I love this place so much though, because Kachi knows that he's definitely out of the game. Yeah. And the only way to potentially yeah. get back into the game is to secure the middle. Yep. And yeah, that's not gonna work, my friend. What a great game again. The level of play we saw in game one, it was back and forth the entire time. And then at the start here, Joan the Maid w took what would normally be a big lead. But Katyan stabilized. Katyan, uh, I think, prioritized the food economy, which you've seen him do with Indians on this before. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> um, I think Joan's recognition, though, to hit the fishing ships and then yep. just hold on, get to Castle Age, and go for Eagles and Slingers, uh, he knew that he just needed to hold his lead, and he did exactly that day. Very and, quick game, too. And for slopes... Joan is going to have Indians. Exactly. And is not going to have... It was. It's just such good preparation. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And you could also consider the fact that if Joan wants to go Mayans on another map, he used Vikings in game number one, which he probably wouldn't use on any of the remaining maps. It's always been like this. This is, this is why Hidden Cup 3 has been so special for me, because very rarely have we had two players who are the exact same style players playing against each other. The last best of five yesterday was like that, but this semifinal, it's a strategist versus someone who is probably more technically skilled, and the score is one-to-one. -one. Uh, here's a look at the achievements for those wondering. It's interesting that Joan actually had more food collected, more wood collected, and way more gold collected in this game. Uh, Kachan Khan, he defended his two tiles, but it was not going to be enough for him, and we move on now. Uh, Kachan, what type of a map does he want to play? He has bay... He has cross, he has ravines to choose from for the next game. Dave, if I were Katyan, I would go Mongols and I would go Bay. I think yeah, it just you want, suits him. You want something where like you're you're forcing the other player to engage you with micro, yeah. basically. Because like you think about last game, the only reason Katyan was in that game after the initial fight 
was because he quick walled the villagers, was because he was microing with the scouts. Like all the little execution plays that other players maybe couldn't do at like the lower execution players. Yep. That's what kept him in there. So you want a map like Bay where maybe you can force fights um, and force the other guy to, to try and micro versus you. Okay, so I want to bring something up. Uh, I don't think that this is going to happen, but if Joe and the Maid is the max, in the Grand Finals of Hidden Cup 2, it was uh, Huns against Mongols, Max against the Viper, and Max had Mongols, and he sent... No, wait. I forget which player had which did, but anyways, Max sent forward villagers to lame the enemy deer and steal oh, it. That. Do you remember that? Yeah. Now, yeah. I don't know if Hera was watching the finals or, or whoever Katjan is was watching the finals. <laughs> that one, I don't uh, know if he wants to do that again, though, because that one didn't work out. It didn't work him. out, exactly. It's just something to consider uh, for a strategy I've seen before if it is a Mongol Mirror matchup. Before we get in, uh, again, we don't, I don't know who Katjan is. You don't know who Katjan is. I also don't know who Joan is. We're just guessing here. Uh, thank you to everyone, again, for showing up for the final day. The goal today is 50k guys we're getting close and thank you for being a part of history here and it's been so much fun uh thank you to all the new subs we have twitch primes we have resubs so many friendly faces uh one dollar for every single sub goes into the prize pool and you can see the breakdown on your screens uh dave you ready let's go what did you say in the chat by the way i saw you say something oh uh old friend me small phallus he hasn't been here for a long oh. time i just saw his name oh yeah he donated five dollars so hello he actually said, is him. Dave muted or does he have a very quiet voice? Can't hear his <laughs> luscious tones. <laughs> his luscious tones. Oh, man. Um, I, normally, if, if when people were like, yeah, Dave's awesome and T90 sucks, it offends me. But I would never want someone to say I have luscious tones. So I'll, you can have that one. <laughs> Let's go, Dave. <laughs> Let's go into game three. All right. And it is Bay. It is Bay. Yeah. I, it just makes a lot of sense. Because Kachan's such a fast player. And uh, it is a Mongol war as well. So let's break it down, guys. Uh, many people call this pants. All right, we'll just get that joke out of the way. But it's another map in Hidden Cup that gives you options. Just like the previous game, you have food that's important, you have gold that's important, you have stone that's important. And uh, the position on this map is always difficult to know what to take. So you can take water. That's great. There's a lot of salmon out here. There's around 2,000 food. But then you also have hunt. And to take that hunt, you're going into a relatively exposed position. So Mongols, what I've seen from the meta players, this is what I fully expect from Kachan, is fast feudal, fighting for water, but then sending a few villagers over to hunt at the same time. Now, if you're Joan the Maid, and you can tell that Kachan is a better meta player, and it's a mirror matchup, do you do something different is my question, Dave. I'm curious. Well, <clears throat> it's kind of weird because... Every Civ matchup I've seen here, you can't afford to not go water. Yeah. But I feel like the one Civ where maybe you could get away with it is Mongols. Mm -hmm. So does he just go for land? Well, remember I, he went Byzantine. He gets teams. punished so hard for that, though. It's just, it's weird. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Well, he's obviously confident not going for the water. Because remember, he went Byzantines and a forward but, against uh, King Sancho. But he still, he still went for fishing ships. True. To start out with. Yeah. Like, he didn't abandon it completely. I'm talking about not making a dock at all. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I saw it one time. It was from Tim in the qualifier. And Tim did not win, but it went to post-imperial age. So Tim didn't win a post-imperial age Mongol war? <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> what? <laughs> Against Angelina that's, Jolie, too. That's very unusual, because Tim is one of the best Mongols players I've ever seen. Yeah, but but I think... What, what about this? Because what Tim did was... He just went fast castle with the deer, and he let his opponent fish. What if you go cup style, and forget about the water in feudal age, and then go back on water in castle age? Maybe that's an idea. Well, he's got a scout here, and maybe <gasps> he could pick off the villager from. Kachan. Oh my God! This is huge. That that's the dock fill right there. That villager could die. Let's see how confident. Are we going to see is. any micro walls? We're going to see the attempt. Are you kidding me? Who is this man? That's this ridiculous. Yeah, and, and yep. now the scout for Kachan's on full HP. Now it's weak. And he could just he could just attack Joan's scout, and Joan has he to has, run away. He has delayed the dock, though, and now he's sending his villager out to dock. Do you think 
Do you think he was, because this seems a bit late for him. Do you think that he was planning on going for the deer and then he f saw that he delayed that villager so much and now he went out to dock? No, I think I think it was part of the plan to dock because of his house placement. Okay. He sent the villa okay. to the house and then it was the exact same house timing for Kachan, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, but, dude, you said at the end of yesterday that it's very possible that Viper is out of the tournament. And I just want to bring this up for a second. There are three players who are incredibly good with micro and quick walls. Uh, I'm actually just going to start with two. Uh-oh. Uh -oh, where? Villager, where? villager with the boar. Oh, no, he's got loom. Okay. Oh, okay. He had to get loom for that, that vill. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to block with the sheep? Okay, she's fine. Yeah, Dave was freaking out. He thought he would lose the villager there. But, but Hera and Viper are the two who I think could pull that quick wall off, and it's almost expected. But the reason I thought that maybe this was more Hera was because of all the, the excessive walling in some of the games. The 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 style moves that we saw in very important games in the other best of fives. But regardless of who it is, whether it's Hera or Viper or and maybe it's somebody else, there's only one nerd, in my opinion. <laughs> Out of Leary, Viper, and Hera, there's only one of them in the semifinals. I, I yep. just don't know who. Or, yeah, but we'll get into that we'll later. We'll get into anyway, that. The interesting, the interesting thing for me is that everything is working in Joan's favor right now, other than the scout HP. True, yeah. He delayed that dock villager quite a bit. He made green get loom early, which hurts your eco. True. And green's fish are way farther away. Good point. And he got the fishing ship out later. So we were talking about how Joan might struggle with the meta because we think that Kachin is a better meta player. Yeah. But right now... Jones in the lead. It might just be 10 seconds, but 10 seconds is a lot in a Mongols war. Yep. 10 seconds matters a lot. Also, you have to say, Katyan is really good with scouts. We saw in the previous game, and one scout can be super annoying here. Right here, you attack the palisade. Joan has to make sure it's walled. Attack this palisade now. Joan needs to make sure it's walled. Uh, yeah, I'm with you, Dave. I think that that's a good start for Joan, considering what we said. Oh, he's going to find the villager yeah. too? Joan's going to be in feudal age and find that villager? Who wins that? I think Joan wins that. Uh, uh, no. They he's going to be win super now. annoying. He can delay it. Yeah, he can delay it. Look at, look at that. Look at that. He's like, nope. Hey, I want to attack you. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Multiple times. Yeah, so now he's slightly faster to the fire galleys. Slightly faster to the second dock. I love it. God, this series is so good already. We're only game three. I know. Well, uh, this is a concern for Joan. He's got to get out of here with the scout. It's weaker now. You better hope that was worth it, because if he wants to pressure the deer... You know what he's doing, Dave? I wonder if he feels like he's going to lose his scout. He just wants to have scouting information on the deer so he knows yep. if Katyan goes out there. Yep, and he's also pulling it as far away from his base as possible. Yeah. So, yeah, he... Oh, he got to the deer and then he turned around. That's funny. Yeah, and now he's going out to his own deer, and I bet you Katyan's going to send his scout over to the deer right now and see if Joe and the maid is on them. So I think we could see, easily see a transition into scouts and oh, we could see a big demo. It's very rare to see demos as early. Well, you could get the villager and he could get the fire ship <gasps> too, if he's careful. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, but the repair ville. How important is that repair villager here? Not important enough. And another fire ship comes in. Uh, one goes down now for... Oh, wow, Dave. That was really, really, really good for Joan. Yep. Epic. And now he's going to kill the villager? Yeah, and now he's just got to back up and defend and repair himself. Joan the Maid has a population lead right now and of three. And he's, he's gone out to the deer, but Kachan has seen that. Oh, no. This scout is going to be so annoying over here. It will. But the fishing ship has gone down now for Kachan Khan. So he, he's behind on water. I don't know how there's a three eco difference uh, or such a huge population difference this early, Dave. Look at it. It's 31 population for Joan and it's 28 for Katyan. And mm -hmm. Joan the Maid lost his scout. That's incredible. Well, I mean, he lost one villager and he lost the fishing ship too, right? Mm -hmm. So Yeah. All right. Well, these can oh, swing. Oh, that scout's going to be so annoying, dude, at the deer from Joan. <laughs> Just, I bet you that bill will die. That bill will die right there. Oh, 100%. He knows it's the, it's the weak woman on the, on the left, or on the right, On the right, sorry. yep. Or not. Demos. 
Did the demos cancel each other out there? I looked yep. away at the scout. You got yep, me too excited did. for that. Good micro back from Kachian. However, he loses another fire. As does Joan, though. Joan's got to get back, and he really hasn't been repairing much, which is fascinating to me. Like, no. does he even have a vill here? He doesn't even have any ships queued up yet. Whoa, he doesn't What's even have... And he killed the scout, but I think the scout took the vill. Uh, there was five over here. Yeah, so the scout took the villager. I think he's gonna add a stable then. Yeah, now, okay, so if he just gives up on water, which really surprises me, um, he's going to probably... Oh, he's gonna try and demo the fish, Dave. <laughs> uh, possibly, and he's gonna go for scouts for map control. Why would you demo one fishing ship? Well, I, I thought about it, like, that's that's actually what we've seen, so I guess he's gonna try and come back on water. <laughs> uh, but yeah, remember, there's been a few players who would make a demo for three or four fishing ships. I think it was Joan, actually, who did that in the uh, Byzantines remember, versus Persians War. Remember that he scouted the deer, too, and Kachan is on the deer right now. Yeah. And he sees the bodies of those deer. Yep. He knows he's there. So scouts over there, once you build up, like, two or three... Mm -hmm. Do a lot of damage, or just even force him back to the TC, and once Mongols are off hunt, yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, Katan realizes he's exposed. It's also worth remember or reminding people, sorry, that you can't full wall your base on this map unless you wall to the edge. So the way Katan is walling does not prevent scouts from running past. He is kind of walling, so he might be able to wall in the deer villagers. So Joe needs to get, he needs to get scouts over there, but I think he needs to arrive with a minimum of two. If he wants to do damage, otherwise Kachan might be fine. And Kachan adding wow. fish. Kachan's walling perfectly, Dave. This is exactly yep. what you need to do. He knows that he's exposed. He doesn't know for sure that scouts are coming. He's he's doing well on water, and he has more food in the bank right now. Kachan's doing really well. And Joan's gonna see that uh, Kachan actually added fish, so now he's demo them. He needs to go after that some point yeah. i don't i don't think a demo is really going to work against this player oh. it's going to go after the fire galley oh dave the, the scouts are here though the scouts are here Bye. can he quickly can he just lose one vill oh. one vill's fine he's going to try and quick wall it okay so he's walling behind this is he going to save this guy not against two scouts not against two scouts. oh my god it was so close though <laughs> I was about to be so mad for Joan. <laughs> like, like, listen, it's impressive, but that's also stupid. <laughs> like, that should not be a thing. It's just that no. people are so good. And Davey didn't wall the left. Or, or, sorry, not the left. It's like the south of his base. So, yes, he has he fires. He can go right around the dock. But the scouts can run right by. They just have to be quick. And Joan scouted that. He's going to block him with the fishing ships. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a play. Oh my god. What a play. That was huge. So not today. Didn't need the wall. No. Didn't need the wall. Just block it with the fish. Easy. Now, who's on the way to Castle Age first though, Dave? It's Joan. Kachan Khan has had the resources. He was just late to his market. Also doesn't even have Oh no, he has his blacksmith, sorry. And I see both players on stone. Too. So he's going for the both players going for the early Castle Age Mangadai. Yeah. So it's 40 eco versus 39. This is fascinating to me because there's five fishing ships for Kachan. Yeah. And yet he's only, well, now two economy ahead. That is uh, probably due to Joan some idle continues, time. Joan continues uh, to take the deer too. So he's made a mill oh. way out in the middle of nowhere. Very exposed. Yeah. But you're kind of taking that risk with Mongols, right? You got the scouts there to provide pressure yep. at, at Kachan's base. And then you're going to rely on your eco bonus with those deer. Yeah, so this was something that we added into Hidden Cup 3's bay because we noticed water was still really strong. And so we added more deer. That way someone in Katyan's position could have the water, but they're still, if they're giving up map control, going to be behind in another way. So that's great. And that's, again, preparation from Joan. Look at this. Joan tried to pick off the weak fire galley with the scout. And then Katyan pulled it just far enough away so that wasn't possible. This is some high level Age of Empires 2. Oh my goodness. Just disgusting. It's if Joan is max, though, I feel like he's been practicing because I've never seen this level from him before. I agree. What like if he's answering the micro with pretty good micro of his own, yeah. too. And we've seen the macro from Joan, which is something that Max has always had. Mm -hmm. He goes for three town centers. Now, there might be a completely different approach from Kachan. I think Kachan, since he doesn't have the map, 
might build his castle early and go for more manga dive for map control, but then add the town centers after the fact. I see him adding a barracks. That is so. a bit weird, actually. That's, it's it's not the fact he's adding it, it's the timing of it is a little strange. Yeah, why? It's not going to make spears, right? Is it so he can then make a stable? Yeah, probably. Bloodlines? So he probably wants early Mangadai then. Yeah. See, there's the castle right there. Yep. Very safe. But what I don't what I don't get about that is you need a second town center at least. No, I know. And so you... you... It's, so, it's, it's such a weird timing for barracks. Yeah, it doesn't do anything for you right now except the waste wood because you can't, you don't have the wood for a stable. That's weird. Like you could have used it for like, ah, oh, he's getting both sides anyway. He's getting both sides, he's got the castle, he's got a second TC, yeah. he'll be fine. Yeah, all right. Well, let's keep an eye on the number at the top then because if it's immediate three TC for Joan, Joan should get a lead there despite not having fish. Uh, fishing ships are incredibly efficient and they're still, uh, I want to say about 500 food left on water. And so much food in the bank too for him, and that's just because of the deer. Like, it yeah. was a heads up play to go out there. Mm -hmm. And look at look at what he's doing with all the scouts. He knows he can't pressure anymore. He's scouting the entire map! Wait a look second. Look at his vision, dude! Wait a second. He's scouting everywhere. He knows all about the belt. He knows all about 100%. the crotch. He's going for 100% scouting here. There is... I think there's an achievement for that. <laughs> That's amazing scouting, and now he's going to the deer on the right corner. What? Now, I haven't seen that. Even Tim didn't do that. I, I've That's... seen... Wow, okay. Who is this person, Dave? That's a really heads-up play. But... That's a really, really heads-up play. Dave, Joe and the Maid impressed me in the other stages of this tournament. But I thought Max, because there were some... There were some small things that he just wasn't doing. There wasn't a ton of micro. It was just really good preparation and strategy. But the way that he's played in this semi, this is a level above what you would possibly even expect from Max with some of these That's small what details. I was just saying. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was saying before. Like, if this is Max, he's playing at such a high level yep. right now, and he's put in the time to get better. Now look at the relics, Dave. There's three relics on this part of our screen. Uh, that monk is going to bring one back, hopefully. I think if there's one player that would be very dangerous if they get to the Mangadai early, it would be Katyan. And Katyan already has Bodkin. Katyan is on three TCs and is actually not as big a difference as I thought there would be economically. Ooh, this is interesting. Oh. Sees the monks. <laughs> Does he get a conversion? Oh, right near the castle splits away. Oh my how did god. That monk, dude. How did that monk not get a conversion though? I don't know. <laughs> like that, that monk, that is Age of Empires 2 monk RNG right there. Joan was super unlucky, but that split from Kachan away from the castle fire, that wasn't that was something else. It's guys, he didn't even know the castle was there. He like he reacted as the castle shot the arrows yeah. to split away. Insane. <laughs> it's just stupid. Like it's it's so funny. Over the years, as the players get better. The expectations just get higher and higher yeah. and higher, and like it seems like the game is just broken sometimes, you know. Oh, just don't say a word there, Mister Fire Tuck. Don't say. <laughs> don't tell him. Don't tell him. Oh my God! What? He got away. <laughs> we went from praising the players to that. Wait, hold on. He got away. <laughs> no ballistics. He's getting away. <laughs> Oh man! Well, this is so oh, good for Katja still. For Joan, yeah. yeah, why? Why have the manga die there? And you know what he probably wasn't expecting was was the husbandry upgrade. I'm pretty sure that Katja. Oh, I lied. Never mind. He does not have husbandry. He's getting the stable now, which is why he built the barracks earlier to probably get husbandry and bloodlines. Yep. But you cannot lose manga die numbers. Fourth TC now for Joan. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's gonna boom up. Well, not if the ma manga die have something to say about it. This is why you add the castle early, and this is why we said Katyan should play this way. Because Katyan's such a micro-nerd. Is he gonna get a conversion this time? No. Also, I love how Katyan sent a few Mangatai to protect his monk in the north. So he can make sure that no scouts snipe his monks. Oh my god, he's this is so insane. the confidence to come in here. Yeah, so good. So freaking good. And now Ballistics. Katyan's playing so clean. So, so clean. Oh my goodness. Both getting it, ballistics, it, though. He's just keeping... He's keeping Joan penned here. Yeah. So Joan wants to fight this. If Joan gets conversions, it's a big deal. But he just gets why away. Why can he not get any conversions? Yeah. <laughs> this, this, be, this is super unfortunate. Yep. In terms of RNG. 
happens. Now, armor for Joan, but if I were him, I'd get bloodlines first. Okay, he's getting bloodlines. Still, I think numbers matter more. You should heal up that weak Magadai, too. Yeah, I don't like the fact he's going out to fight with that. No, you, you've already you've already discovered that Kachin has higher numbers. Yeah. And has probably better micros. True. So I wouldn't I wouldn't go out at all. I mean, he's gonna go to the relics though. See, in the like, past Kachin I would say it's now a patrol out. war, now that they're getting upgrades. Oh my goodness, but No, Joan! Joan, go back. Okay, Joan. See if they can out micro ballistics. Oh. <laughs> nice. Uh, Very nice. Oh, another pick off. Okay. Yeah, you still, you still, you have to hit as you run, but you got to focus on running primarily. Oh, and the way his unit's path here is awful. It's awful for Joan. He needs to heal it's him. It's away though. He needs to heal him. Yep. So one for two. <laughs> not that, not as big of a deal as I thought it would be. Look initially. at the, look at the splits from both. They're both out microing ballistics. Look at this. That's crazy. This is this is this is why Mongol Wars are fun, <laughs> right here. This is why Mongol Wars are fun. We have Kachan Khan on the way to the Imperial Age. Uh, he does have two castles now to produce more Mangadai, and I, I do notice that there's a slight difference in the eco technologies. Everything else is pretty close, and Joe and the Maid will be clicking up to Imp soon as well. Okay, so Dave, let's talk about castle positions. Uh, it is four to one with relics as well, but on this map. Castle positions are huge, and I don't like Joan's castle. Mm, he has to place that, that castle, I feel, because he's scared to move out with his numbers, though. Yep. Ideally, it would be a, a little bit more to the right and, a, and farther forward. Yeah. But, yeah, he's scared of it getting denied because he, he remembers that TC. And I, I hate in Mongol Wars when players make castles right beside each other. Yeah. Because if you take out one castle, you're going to take out the other, and that's your primary production building, right? I think he almost has to because of the risk of it all. Now, Katyan always oh, going to castle the middle, which is interesting. I was just about to say, I think you need to drag this late, build your next castle next to the stone, build your next castle on the belt area with all the golds. Very surprised he's choosing to go for that castle, because now you could argue that Joe and the Maid's castles are in better position to make Trebs and Treb that down. I think Kachin's just super confident in this unit micro yeah. right now. Yeah, man, he's always trying to out-micro ballistics. This is, this is really fun to watch. But Kachin, 23 kills, 11 deaths, he is the player who's going to be taking the better fights. A third castle here for Joan. So Joan knows I need to take that castle down. It's all about castle numbers with Mangadai. Those two golds too for Joan. Very exposed. I like how he has very, the very uh, former deer villagers on that three tile gold. He's had them over there for a while. Something that Kachen has not spotted. All right, so faster Imperial Age for Kachyan, and he's making Trebs out of all of his castles. All three of his castles are making Trebs. It will They're be gonna a Treb be slow war. to get there, though. Yeah. They're going to be slow to get there, like, especially the one in his base. It's going to take time. And Joan, the advantage of building them close, I already spoke about the disadvantage, but the advantage is that your Trebs reinforce really quickly, yep. your Magadai reinforce really quickly. Now, Dave... Kachan is upgrading the Mangatai by getting chemistry in the university. That takes a long time. Joan is not getting chemistry. He's getting masonry, which gives his castles more HP. So he wants to survive the Treb War and then worry about upgrading the Mangatai after the fact. Yeah, you see, now chemistry comes in. That's a really smart move from Joan. Kachan also exploring on the right-hand side with a couple Mangatai. Doesn't see that gold, though, from Joan. Yep, not yet. Let's see and how I this goes. I think Joan's going to lose this castle, for sure. But he has more villagers here to repair. He has 500 stone, and there's only 40 stone for Kachan. And masonry. I, I'm not sure about that, Dave. Oh, sorry. I meant Kachan's going to lose the okay. castle. Did well, I yeah. say Joan? <laughs> you, you said Joan, yeah. I was like super <laughs> confused. I was like, what is he talking about? Okay. Of course he's going to lose the castle. <laughs> okay. And once the castle's gone, you can come in for the trebs like this. Yeah, just making sure uh, we're on the same page here is all. <laughs> It is kind of interesting, though, if you're Joan, because you can't necessarily fight the Manga Dive from Kachan yet. Or can you? No, they're going to be elite. Just still repairing and going for Trebs. And more Trebs. Is that and Trebs going to go what? down? What? Yep. 
The oh boy, that's the risk about building the castle forward, right? Yeah, I'm so surprised that Kachan did that because if it goes late, he's he seems like the better player with these types of moves. I'm really surprised at Kachan's moves. He could have he could have thrown the game with that castle there. All of his strengths on the front. Elite Mangadai coming in for both of them too. Elite Mangadai in for blue faster. Green just got it now. You're kidding me, Dave. You've got to be kidding me. Kachan was in such a good position. Out? Joan has more Mangadai, he sniped so many Trebs, and now he has all the Trebs in the world to oh send forward. Oh my god, what a time to fight! And he Masonry. right as Elite Mangadai came in, and it was like, it was three seconds faster yeah. than Kachian. And Elite Mangadai, for anyone who doesn't know, is such a massive upgrade from the regular Mangadai. Yeah, huge. And w once he got those numbers down initially, he just, it swung the fight so hard. <laughs> Dave, I don't know how this is possible, but Joan has... 30 villagers on gold. <laughs> they had 30 villagers on gold a moment ago. And poor Kachan still can't find that gold. That uh, gold. Yeah, I'm looking at it right wait. now. He's got one patrolling there. No, it's just patrolling back and forth. Oh, man. <laughs> now, see, what oh. What I think Kachan should have done has been patient. Initially, uh-oh. Oh, don't leave your trebs like that. Uh-oh, Joe. Do not leave your trebs like that, dude. Your Mang and I are going over to deal with those two on the side. He, he, might, have, he might have enough... Yes, he he's might lose some traps to attack. He's gonna lose uh, two Three, traps, probably. but still kill the Mangadai. Three. Two. <laughs> yeah, two. And, he, and he's gonna clean up. <laughs> yeah, but but what's the difference now? It's 28 to 14 in Mangadai numbers. Yeah. So, like, Kachan, who had all the, the lead in those numbers and was taking those fights, overextended. He really should have been more passive, I think, and taken the map control and, and, and secured this gold in the north with a castle. Instead, he just threw away Trebs, threw away the castle. And Dave, if and Kachan at, has to react... Sorry, I'm getting yep. super excited now. But if Kachan has to react to these Mangadai, then he might he not be able defend. to defend. Yeah. Yep. Jones got basically Kachan's army at the front and then Kachan's army equivalent at the side No as well. way. No way. Oh, man. I mean, Joan will just snipe that trebuchet, no problem. He has all the numbers in the world, Dave. Yeah, and, and Kachin's forced to, to switch into Elite Skirmisher. This is something you never want to see in a Mongol War. Every time you see this, it works about, like, I'd say 20% of the time. Yeah. <laughs> but 80% of the time, you're going to lose out to the Megadai numbers from the other player. And the Mongol player can switch to Hussar. Oh, wait, Joan already switched to Hussar. Yeah. It's one thing to switch to Hussar before it happens, but like this was this was before the ranges came up. He was already prepping the stables a moment ago. This is disgusting. Can't believe what I'm seeing. I I honestly felt as though Kachan was just going to steamroll in a Mongol war on this, based on how the game was going. His micro looked so good in Castle Age. Well, it, it built that castle forward. Still has four relics and still has yep. a ton of villagers on gold, so this could go either way. But I think Kachan's gonna gotta come forward and snipe these trebs. And that's the opportunity for Joan the Maid to eliminate the Mangadai numbers. As Joan, you almost want to just target the Mangadai. Yeah. That's what he's doing. Yeah, he's kind of doing it. He's more of a, a patroller, but you can patrol in post imp. He's also patrolling into the houses. The houses are helping Kachan, thanks to E. Yeah. But the castle goes down. gonna go down. Oh, another castle farther back for Kachan. He just keeps falling back here. I think. Once Joan starts thinking about that belt area yep. and going after that TC up there. Oh, what? These houses are annoying. villagers up there. Where? Up near that TC from Kachan. Oh, yeah. Oh, he deleted them for pop space. Uh -huh. They have like 150 bills. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, he deleted Trev's them for down. pop space. Yeah, that was good for Kachan. The houses actually helped him. <laughs> uh, so he, he was able to get some Mangadai, but I think he lost as many as he killed. And uh, now they're just even on the amount of Trebs that have gone down. And he's still going for Skirmisher in a Mongol War. It just normally doesn't work. I think it maybe works 5% of the time. Yeah. I said 20. Oh, did you? I didn't hear that, sorry. You could at least agree with me. <laughs> I didn't, I'm sorry, I'm too, I'm still not really awake. And uh, yeah, 20%, <laughs> it, that's, that's fine. It works 20% of the time, 50% of the time. Or, or 25% <laughs> exactly. of the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And now you have some rams, and if rams ram down the monastery, those relics will be Jones. And uh, as, as long as he keeps that Hussar production up, Dave, I have all so the faith in the world. Man. Yeah. So impressive. Wow. 
This is on a home map for Kachan that he should win. Yep. He should definitely win this based on the style of player that he is. We have Onager for Joe, and that's an interesting one. And I love the attention to detail to, to realize how important that upper belt area is. And oh, oh, he knows about this gold, buddy. He sees everything. So yeah, those villagers will all die. Look at the vision from Joan. You can't quick wall that. Joan sees everything <laughs> sure. except that back corner. And oh. now Katyan's main Magadai army is forced to go up there and engage. Yeah. And, ooh, we might have a Magadai fight up on the hill too. Yep. And no trebs Joan exposed. Heads over. No trebs exposed for, for Joan in the middle now. I think he actually just wants to take out the Magadai and then take out the town center. Instead of adding any siege there. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, all right, I'm just going to destroy this TC real quick. I'll wait to finish you off. Yeah, I mean, that will happen eventually. And maybe this is the opportunity for Kachan to, I think it to is. push out yeah, a little bit. I think bit. it is. And now he's looping around with the skirms to the right. He's got the Magadai at the bottom. Uh-oh. I don't think Joan should be taking out this TC, dude. Another repairs. The danger. All right, there's a lot of Hussars in the middle. Well, actually, not too many Hussars for Joan in the middle. It's 60 military for Kachan and only 48 for Joan. You are fighting uphill with less this Magadai. danger. TC's down. Wow, might, that's a lot of trapped. units from Kachan. Oh, and there's a castle there for Kachan, so I think uh -oh. Joan is just going to have to take a fight at some point here. You cannot lose Magadai numbers in a Mongol war. Oh, man, and Kachan has stabilized, and now the skirms make sense. You just have to fight this, Joan. Uh, why is he attacking the mining camp? No, DE! Why oh, no, do units dude. attack mining no, camps? No, dude! That's so frustrating because this game's so complicated and you patrol into mining camps. Still, he has reinforcements, Dave. He's actually doing a decent job targeting the Magadai from Kachin as well. Yeah. So it takes longer for Kachin to reinforce because he's he's got the three castles farther back. Yep. Um, Joan, actually, no, never mind. I thought Joan had a fourth castle. He doesn't. He's going for Trebs, he's going for Rams, and he's going for Onagers. It's three castles to seven somehow. How, how is that even possible? There's another castle now for Joan. Uh, so he's Ram Kachin pushing the ranges. seven castles? Are you serious? Yeah, he has seven castles according Where? to my overlay. I four. At the bottom left. Does it not count castles that went down, maybe? Oh, it does. Maybe yeah. it doesn't, yeah. Still work in progress, guys. We're actually, that was just... I told them that we, we wanted to implement that so we would test Dave's casting. Because he said that going skirms would work 20% of the time in a Mongol war. But well, the Rams and the Onagers are going to do work against the skirms. And now the Rams, for Joan, are pushing into the left side. And they might be able to kill one of those castles. I, I mean, there's still a sh uh, lot of, of Mangadai. <laughs> There's still a lot of manga die here, man. That's a dangerous number. <laughs> Sorry, front page. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, these rams will not take out that castle. Also, my mom might be watching, guys. What time is it? And, uh, well, there might not might not be church on a Sunday. She could be home watching me. I've got to, got to clean up my act. Look at the rating, though, from the Hussars. Joan? Yeah, he's going back up to that top corner yeah. again. Knows gold might become an issue here for Katya. I'm really surprised he went for Onager. Let's see how it works. <gasps> Big shot! That was decent. A lot of weak manga die in there now, and the monastery will go down. That's Dave. a big deal. That's four relics. Katyan's not going away quietly, though. He is not going away quietly. It is still... A it's 188 population for both at the moment. It's, it's about manga die, Joan. You've got to get the manga die. Kachan is, he has the crucial numbers. He has 92 military right now. 92. I don't know if he can afford to keep doing this, but every time he thinks about making a push out with those numbers, the Hussars come in to raid him, though. How annoying is that? Look, look again. Joan doesn't want to face the main army. So what he does is he raids again. And now the Mangadite or something's going to need to go defend against that. Can you almost consider in Joan's position, like, just making a stone wall across that entire belt area? Like, <laughs> you will yeah, not access this. maybe. I think mm -hmm. it, it's it got to be castles on hills. That's it's probably the play. I, I'm really worried that Joan is going to lose his position. Uh, Kachan is yeah. going to bring... Like, it looks like right now, with 40 more military, Kachan could bring this back. Oh, and now we have a, a counter raid where Kachan mm -hmm. could run in. Now, there are ca those three it, castles there. Yep, he sees it. 
also, I, I feel like Joan has too many villagers in this situation. Maybe. He's been popcat forever. He can't produce the Mangadai. Maybe. He's not producing out of two of his castles, actually. Well, I think what's interesting about this is if Joan holds against the 90 military or 100 military from Kachan, then he should have then, more resources yeah. long term yeah. to, to make more. So it's more about... Like, it's just, can you hold against 98 military yeah. with 50 of your own? He's got double the amount of military here. Onagers, though, coming out from these siege workshops. Can they make a difference? I want him to make heavy demo on water. He's making docks right now. Yeah, Maybe. Onagers rarely make a difference against Mangadai. They can make a difference against Skirms. But in, this, in these choke points, though... That's true. If he pushes him back... Look at the, look how Onagers fast the Onagers are, too. It's so funny. The Onagers pop out, and Katja, and the confidence we saw earlier, Dave, is returning. Uh, incredibly confident play. But can Joan hold this? There's an Onager coming out of the sea. There's raids right for Katja in the north! There's multiple raids in the north on the gold! What a game! Onager, are you gonna pop out? I think you pop out once the Mangadai run a little bit. Like, now you pop out? There's another- There's oh! two in that siege workshop! The split! It's still connected, it's split, but beautiful micro from Kachan Khan. 180 pop for both now, but look at the military count, Dave. It's now 90 against 80, so Joan the Maid is caught up. This is a ridiculous game. I'll go back to the other screen here to see the relics, because I know Kachan needs to collect them again. He only has one brought in. Uh, that you know will become rates? a concern. The raids kind of helped him a little bit, though, because I was talking about how he yeah. might have too many villagers. Yeah, it's true. And now look at the army counts. Yeah. But what's better here? It's so close! There's more Hussars in front for Katya. Normally that makes the difference. And I, yeah, I think Joe needs to back up. Just, uh... He's closer to his production buildings, though. Yeah, he was also attacking Mangatai instead of the Hussars, so that's why Katya is repositioned. Onager and Seedram was super expensive for Joan. Yep. Super expensive. Okay, now Joan backs up because he has Hussars in front. It's just, it's a patrol war now, guys. There will be a few splits here or there against Onagers, but again, Onagers against Speedy Mangadai and High HP Mangadai normally don't do a thing. Whoa, what is, what, what, what is, what? That was weird for Kachin. What Kachin doing? Yeah. <laughs> he has more Mangadai. I think, yep. again, Joan needs to back up here. Should back up quick if he's going to do it. Oh boy, don't lose your numbers it's, like this, buddy. I, I don't know if I'm even correct in saying this. It's 50 for both, it's 40 for both. No, it's way more Magadai for Kachan. 46 to 31! Yep. 46 to 31, and he I knows think this. this. Is the throw here. Joan, you've got to back up, my friends. Uh, wait, wait a second. Wait. A How do we cast this game? <laughs> he's targeting the. Ma he's manually targeting the Magadai. Yeah, he's got to back up, Joan. You, you've got to back up, man. 153 population for Joan, and it is 190 population for Kachan. I'm only, really surprised he got there. Only 13 on gold for Joan, and it's it's looking a bit stretched right now. And meanwhile, I mean, Kachan has four relics True. and 25 on gold right now. It was almost... We can agree that Kachan made a mistake at the start of Imp. But I think we could also agree that Joan, Joan wasn't made, able to punish. Yeah. And, like, Joan sending all his Magadai up north there, that, it's just yeah. so weird. Yeah. It's so weird to me. And and going for Siege Ram and Onager, it's just not the play in a Mongol war. No, it's thing. never the play. Onager and because Siege Ram has done very little. When you when you do that, you're not putting the pressure on Kachin anymore, and yep. Kachin has time to lay more castles. And then instead of continuing with the Elite Skirm, he switches back into Magadai. Yeah. Exactly. We would be saying the same thing, or a similar thing, about Kachan with castle numbers and Mangadai after his mistake if it was punished. So both players made mistakes, but Kachan held on, and I, I'm loving the amount of production he has had. That said, it's 90 military for both, Dave. <laughs> it's 90 military for both, but maybe we have a repeat of before where Jones Mangadai get trapped, because he has much less after that fight a moment ago. Mm -hmm. He does have the hill, and he has uh, Hussars coming in, and Kachan thinks twice about engaging. All right, but you see the castle for Kachan? That's what Joan needed. Like, both players actually failed to just play the game out long term with castles in key positions, and Kachan's getting it now. 
So you know what I think that Joan the Maid should do? I think he should use his Manga Dice sparingly. He can't lose any of them. But he needs to change the point of attack. And I think that if he gets his next ball of Hussars into the farming eco from Kachan, Kachan might need to deal with that with his Manga Dice, and then yep. maybe Joan the Maid can take another position. Yep. think that's going to be the key right now. It's so difficult for Joan to push this castle now. Oh, uh, he's going to go He's going to go for rams at the top to try and push it. No, he's traps. He has four dice. traps. Oh, he's, he kept those alive? Yeah, four traps. Wow, he actually kept those alive. I just assumed and they were dead. <laughs> Katyan needs to make a decision now. Does he defend that, or does he push the three castles he had such a hard time pushing earlier? I think he has to defend. Maybe raid with Hussars, but you don't want to lose that castle. Yeah, he's bringing... Uh, he's bringing some Hussars back up there. As is... Now he's trying to think about it. He's seen the pack of Mangadai. He doesn't Joan. really know yet. Now the Trebs are deploying. The Hussars are still back here from Joan raiding the golds. Look, he hit both the golds again. Okay, Kachan sees this as an opportunity to raid with Hussars, which I like, and he's sending all the Mangadai back, Dave! Joan the Maid is not dead! We are not that's, done! That's oh. such a good play, Yeah. to take that out. And yep. now both players are just gonna be fighting for this gold, but how much- Look at the house walls from Joan! The that. house walls from Joan! One, two, that's three, sick. four, five, six, seven, eight, ten houses. Nine, ten, that's sorry. <laughs> I think it was ten, I didn't really want to count. Oh man, what a what a fight here though for Kachan. He has more manga die. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Joan. This could actually be really bad for Joan. Killed the castle. He's got the Trebs. He's got the Trebs attacking the manga die. Yeah. <clears throat> nice touch. I like it when players do that. Those but are now expensive he's getting traps. trapped again, I think. Yep. Yep. It it just all comes back to that fight in the middle a few moments ago. The fight in the north and early Imperial. And Kachan says, who cares? I still have the Mangatai numbers and beautiful oh, micro. Onager. Onager is, it's it's just bad in a Mongol yep. war. It's just bad. You you just never should do it, unless you're in a position where you can afford siege Onager unthreatened, but not on bay. It's the first time I've ever seen that in a Mongol war here. And now Joan the Maid's gonna lose the golds. And Dave, there's been so much production of Mangatai for Kachan. There's no end in sight. Looking at his castles, he has five. Uh, Manga die queued up at every castle right now and still has more gold income. Yeah, Jones got three on gold right now, one on gold now. Yep. He's also uh, going to be raided just a bit with the Hussars as he's villagers he chopping. He doesn't have the relics trees. too. Look at Katyan. Katyan realized there was a weak blacksmith, and then Joan realized he needed to repair the blacksmith to keep them out. What in the world? That was weird. Maybe the final fight here for Joan? Maybe he needs a big one. He does need a big one. He's trying to loop around above, I think, these Mangadai with the Hussar. No, yeah. he's going... Yeah, he is. Uh, maybe again he'll just run past, raid, and then pull the Mangadai back and make more Hussar. <laughs> We've seen this before. Yeah, raid, be annoying. The problem here is going to be gold. I think so. relics for yep. Kachan. He keeps going back up to the, the top there where those golds haven't oh, been Oh, this taken. is a good fight for Kachan as well. Yeah. Very good fight. See, Joan just didn't react quick enough. And now Kachan runs away. It's still trying to avoid ballistics. <laughs> I know. It's 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 really been an impressive game from both, though. Um, we we have guesses of who the players might be, but regardless, the, the show that they have put on already today has been unreal. Uh, I am just... Yeah, I'm going to be emotional for other reasons at the end of today, but the quality of games has just yep. taken me to a different level. <laughs> it's like, uh, I, I just, I, I can't believe what we're seeing here, but I don't think there's any vills on gold now for Joan. Just one relic, this right? Is, uh, this is looking like an interesting pair of pants right now. We got one side green, one side blue. <laughs> don't wear them in public. You can wear them, <laughs> yeah, you can exactly. wear them at home. They're the comfy pants. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is the gold that, that Joan will want to take. Kachan wisely kills the mining camp before the patrol. And, okay, Joan is focus firing the, the Mangadai. But so is Kachan. Yeah, and he has way more Hussars coming in, too. Oh my goodness, so many units coming in! It feels like Hera. <laughs> Whoa, look at this production! Yeah, place. the amount of times I've seen Hera make a million Hussars. Too many damn times. military to 60 now. Yeah. 
And and the difference here is that Joan doesn't have the gold to make any more Mangadai. Kachan still does. Unbelievable. The literal Mongol horde here. The wing tusks are And Khan is in his name. Yeah, that's true. I mean, However, it's, it's human Khan, but like, <laughs> <laughs> and the the Mongols are the ones killing them in the campaign. But still, whatever. That's as close as we can get. Okay, Genghis Khan didn't do well enough in Hidden Cup too, so we had to go for someone else. <laughs> Or wait a second. <laughs> Never mind. We have all the cons. There's there's more cons available for Hidden Cup 4. We'll see. Kachan Khan. Beast of a player. Meta player. Picked the map. Looked like he was going to lose it, Dave. He has 60 military on our screen. Joe and the Maid's not giving up. Just maybe needs to lose a few more waves of Hussars before he realizes how bad his situation is. What is the what is the wood situation looking like? It's also really bad for Joan. It's it's like, is it good for Kachan though? Nah, he's fine. He has he has twenty seven on wood, and it is currently four for Joan. Yeah, I think Kachan knows his position now. He's he's Mike focus firing down the Mangatai. Still has the Hussar production behind it. It might actually take some time for Kachan to be able to take out the castles. But it has officially reached the point where Joan has no way to come back. Kachan is, is locking down every side, denying this gold again. And oh, yeah. we'll probably Four see a few wood traps. Now, 95 wood. Yeah. For Joan. And Joan calls it. Wow, Kachan Khan comes back. Woo! After early Imperial, it wasn't looking so hot for him, Dave. Well, it was, it was multiple swings in that game. That's what I love about it. Yeah. We thought at one point early that Kachian had the advantage. We thought that Joan had the advantage after he took out the fish early. And then he took out the castle. We thought Joan was going to win for sure. And then he made the mistake of investing in Siege Ram, investing in Onager, and going and putting all of his Mangadai up on that hill. Yep. And getting trapped. Yeah. And, and so two separate throws... But I think Mangadai numbers were more important than castle numbers there. Uh, now, castles ended up being more, I think, for Katyan in the end. But all that Katyan lost was a bit of momentum, the castle, and then he realized he needed to expand to play the map out properly. I'm really surprised that Joan played that that way. Because Joan seems like a player who's going to win on know-how. Yep. And that is I, not how a player who, who dude, knows how to play the game would play a Mongol War. I think that he saw the skirms and he mm. just assumed that Kachin didn't have the stone True. to build more castles and that he had already killed two castles so Kachin would have max two more, couldn't yeah. sustain the Magadai production, and then shifted his entire army to counter skirm Hassan. True. And then when Kachin suddenly showed up with more Magadai, he was like, whoa, wait, what? Yeah. What is happening right now? And then he just, he just couldn't was. come back from that point. Yeah, that's what it was. Because it, it was not skirmishers that, <laughs> this statistic with the skirm thing is going to be funny now, but it was not skirmishers that gave Kachan the opportunity to push back. It was the Mangadai. Was the Mangadai. Yeah, and, yeah, and so Onager Ram came out, and then all of a sudden Joan was like, well, wait a second, how does this guy have 60 Mangadai? Dave, 65,000 food collected for Joan the Maid. Way more than Kachan. Seemed like Kachan had more Hussars, though. Weird. He had, he had more, more gold wood. collected than Kachan. More too. gold. Now, the stone was pretty big, and Kachan having the castle numbers could have had something yeah. to do with his Mangadai numbers, but uh, that was a close game. 99% of the map was explored by Joan to oh 95%. When have we seen that before? I think that's the third time in this tournament we've seen those stats in a game. Wow, just incredible stuff. The relics certainly did pay off for Kachan, and the home map paid off for him. He's up 2-1 to one in the semifinal and now we go to another home map from Joan the Maid, who went for Incas, of all things, on El Dorado and got the win in Game 2. We have High Tide and we have High Doubt. Um, if it's High Tide, everyone's been picking... Wait a second. No, we don't have that. No, we have Slopes. We have Slopes. I'm sorry. This is, again, we're just testing chat. So... What do you what do you pick here as as Katyan? Do you go Japanese? Well, I don't think. Okay, so I want to just break down how mind blowing it must be to play against Joan. Okay, uh, Joan picked El Dorado as a home map, but banned yeah. Chinese, which was the best civilization for that home map. The second best is Indians, 
So Kachan Khan's like, all right, I'm going to pick Indians. He does. He loses with Indians. And now the best save on slopes is Indians. <laughs> no, 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 hold on. I got to go further with this because it, it goes beyond this. What Kachan Khan picked on slopes when he didn't have Indians before was Japanese. And yep. what's the best save on high tide? Japanese. Japanese. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you? The, the mind games here from Joan is just unbelievable because yeah. he, he banned Chinese too, which set up this whole situation, right? Yeah. So, like, what else do you go? What else can you go on ravines? Can you go for like Huns or something? Like, what? What do you pick? Do you go for the troll strategy? You go like Incas to like counter him again because he went Incas versus you. I think. Do you go for Aztecs? I, I think you go Celts or Slavs because yeah. you're not going to use Celts or Slavs on any of the other maps. I mean, you could, but probably not. And Celts and Slavs have really good mid game, which can be dangerous against Indians. So that's what I think. Uh, now, I have not looked. And thank you, Ewo, for the $100 donation, man. He said, great series. Go for 50K. We're getting there. We're going to keep going with the games. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, Dave, let's go. I, I think it's going to be Slavs. <laughs> <gasps> I threw that out there. <laughs> I didn't expect it to stick. <laughs> the Revenge Inca War? What? Or Inca Battle? It'd be pretty sick, wouldn't it? I mean, we've seen Incas beat Indians before. It was just on a completely different map. Huh. All right. Well, oh my God. ladies and gents, this has been an amazing first semifinal. Uh, Katyan Khan could not pick Indians, which is a strong civ on this map because of the shorefish and, uh, and the fact that Mongols are normally used on other maps, so you don't take advantage of the hunt as much. And he's gone for Incas. Inca villagers are affected by blacksmith upgrades, and we saw that when Joan the Maid battered Katyan Khan to death with villagers and eagles in game number two. What do you do here with Incas, though, Dave? Do you, do you, can you afford to go up super fast and just send six villagers forward in Vilrush? Where do you Vilrush, though? Do you Vilrush the fish, or do you Vilrush the other resources? I, I think you try and tower the fish. Yeah, it's mm. probably what you do. But then you're so far from the other res. It's going to take yeah. you forever. <laughs> and also, Indians can be up to feudal age pretty quickly. I feel like he was just mad. About yeah. that El Dorado game. <laughs> well, well, if you think... Now, I, I actually... I'm curious to see if he's playing to strat. Because he might also view this as a game that he's just going to lose straight up. You know, some players, if if they get out Civ drafted, they might think, alright, well, I'm going to try something YOLO, because I'm probably going to lose. But if there's a planned strategy here, we've seen Celts, we've seen Mayans. Yeah, he already used Mayans. Uh, and we've seen Slavs beat Indians on this in the qualifiers in really competitive games. So the stones are forward currently for Joan the Maid. So if it's towers, that could be dangerous. Huh. Yeah, those stone positions, you're right. Yeah, the stone positions could be brutal. This map's like that. There's a lot of stones, lots of golds that are exposed. And also Indians, if it's an Indians war, we normally wall and play clean with scouts. This game isn't going to be clean at all. Kachan Khan has scouted the side, which has the shorefish. And you know what else is notable? He's already scouted the side that Joan would be taking his resources, which is really early. And if this is Hera, uh, Hera and I spoke, and Hera said, I believe that for the main event, what we should do with slopes is we should make it so there's no guarantee of having... Or uh, let me reword this. You don't know which side your fish are going to be on. And yeah. you don't know which side your opponent's fish are going to be on, so promote scouting. Oh my god! It's really, it's really interesting, because Joan is going for the, the deer. deer as Indians, and the Inca player is going for the shore fish. Well, I think Kachan... Why pick Indians? I think Kachan is really confused right now. He's thinking, well, wait a second. Why Why is he not on shore fish Where's yet? Where's his vills? Where's but his vills? But he's going to find him now. But he's scouting the other side. This could work out for him. It's much. This could it's, really work out for him. Wow, Joan will not be happy to see that he's been spotted there. Kachan will be like, ha ha, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. He's probably well, so Indians, happy to see that. Indians just lost their advantage, too. Yeah. Like, you don't go out to the shorefish. Yep. Why are you picking Indians? I still think you should go to shorefish. I'm really surprised Joan did that. Like, maybe he thought about it too much there. 
because yeah. he thought a tower would be coming. But now the food income for Kachan is actually faster because regular villagers on shorefish is faster than regular villagers on deer. Uh, Indian villagers on shorefish is even faster than other villagers. So the uptimes will still come in, Dave, and there's still a lot of strats. We're going to see him. Sure, Look at but... the walls. Look at the walls from Kachan's point of view. He's got palisades all around the fish so we can see. Uh, yep. So you place these here. This is just... It's not a bug, it's a feature. It's one of those things. Always existed. You have to spend the wood to do it, but if a unit walks over that, you can see it. So this will tell him if Joan ever goes out to the shorefish. You can only do that if you scout that area. Dude, this is so weird. It's like, really good from Kachan, though. Like, I have to say, is. the scouting is impeccable. Like, instead of capitalizing on your Civ's bonuses, you're getting so scared by your opponent's Civ bonus that you... Like, you yeah. don't go out to the fish. Dave. You should be dictating the game. You shouldn't be dictated to. The Vils. And here come the Vils, and they're going yeah. out to the deer. The Vils are on like. the way. Yeah, yep. so... It's not even... You, it, forget the tower. Okay. It's just a Vil rush. <laughs> just get the blacksmith upgrades, oh. and just go for the Vil rush. Do you think the... I don't know if the stat people can do this. And guys, he's not uh, muted. Stop it. Um, I, I wonder if we can get the statistics on Inca win rate up uh these are stats taken before de but i think inca's win rate off after like six thousand plus games on arabia was top five dave they're so good it's just weird because they don't get picked as frequently well i think players don't like the fact that their opponent is always knows exactly what they're going yeah. for <laughs> And here come the Vils. there's That's the true. blacksmith with six villagers so inca's and are seven i think joan Joan needs to leave. Hmm. Like now. Well, Joan doesn't know. Joan, Joan has much less scouting. And he Joan's sees got the, the up time. The fish, finally. Okay, well, let's see here. Don't get walled Hello? in. Don't get walled in. Joan. Just don't get walled in. Don't get walled in. Don't get walled in. Run, run home. Okay. You can't wall on this hill area. So he's yeah. safe there. And looks like he's ahead with the villagers. So Gotchen's going to have an issue walling Whoa. in front of them. Maybe he can wall out one Whoa, of them. Whoa, Dave. We have a villager and oh my militia God, going, to, going to the shorefish. And it's worth noting that Wheelbarrow has come in for Katyan, which makes villagers faster. Normally, you get that for Eco, but with the Inca Vil Rush, you get that so the Vils can, can uh, run around and attack faster. Green's never going to expect this. But he can wall it in like oh! a nerd! How are you going to notice that, well, bro? Well, this is why you build the tower, though. This is why you build the tower there. And hold on. This is also why you bring the scout, which is now walled in. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness, man. Kachan Khan. He has attack he, and he has he armor on the bills right now. He doesn't see the tower from blue, but the thing with this... They the reason die. this might be bad for blue is that he's now used his stone to make a tower there. He can't make a defensive tower <laughs> to defend against this tower push from green. Green could just make a tower all the way around yeah. blue's TC right now. And he is all not this, on stone. He has all this food, but I don't know what he does with the food. It's pretty incredible. You know what would be even more crazy, though, is if he sends villagers forward to mill the shorefish at Katyan Khan's side. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that'd be that's dominance right there. But, that's but asserting dominance. He's gonna need to leave his side. Wait, Kachan's following him. Watch, and now he's sending one villager back. Like, no, no, no. I was just running with one. Yeah, I'm not running with multiples. The exactly. other two, don't worry about them. Yeah, he also changed it to a gold miner. He, I, I think he's intentionally this? clicked the gold to make it seem like it was a gold miner. And now, oh my God, Joan went to the gold at the front, but Green is ready. Kachan's Look, ready with three Blue villagers. is abandoning his fish, and Kachan Khan's like, uh, I guess we're just swapping fish. This is ridiculous. They're just swapping the fish. But, he, man, he's not going to be able to defend against this tower. That's he true. He doesn't have any stone. That's true. I, I This is really bad for Joan. This is so bad for Joan. Just, uh, wait, wait a second. Man at arms. Man at arms. Man at arms. Kachian. Kachian. Ooh. This is, that's wheelbarrow okay. right there, dude. The Vils are so fast with wheelbarrow. Fast wheel, fast attack, fast armor. Incas never die. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, I mean, Katyan does have a ton oh, no, of don't do this. in that TC. Yeah, no, oh, Joan, Joan. Right into the TC. Joan. He's distracted at his base. He's running with so many villagers right now. There's just this villagers. Is... It's Nomad now. Yep. I, I like what a messy the game. forward lumber camp from Joan, actually, instead of the forward mill. Forward mill from Katyan makes a lot of sense. Look at the Vil difference, though. It is it is worth mentioning that until a moment ago with the forward mill, 
Kachan didn't have food to produce villagers after he lost his shorefish. <laughs> Look, there's gonna be towers all the way around the TC, just like I said. What? Oh no, man. There's a lumber camp for- Dude! I think Joan is ahead economically right now. He's taking the deer on <laughs> Kachan's side, and he has two areas where he has wood. <laughs> He's so spread out, and he can, like- Potentially batter down that tower. He's walled in the villagers so he can batter down that tower at the uh, back which, of his base. Which one? Sorry, there's so many towers. Oh, that one. No, you can't yeah, actually. If you wall diagonally oh, no, like that, it doesn't work. You can only attack if it's not walled. It's stupid. Oh my god! Kachan's looking for the vills and he just passed them. That's a lot of lumberjacks. He just passed them. He didn't see the... Yeah, he Wait, he might the find him though. though. He's looking all over. He's looking. What is happening here, Dave? Oh no, man. So much pressure here from God. Oh, there's stone here for Maid on the right side. He could take that stone if he wants to. Yep. yep. And all, but all those villagers are weak. So if, if Green ever finds him and he's looking, <laughs> he's looking for the villagers. Look at Joan the Maid. He was running around, running away from Kachin's villagers at the top, and yeah. he looped back around. Now he's making a market at the edge of the map, and maybe those can go to gold again. Dave, I don't even know what edge of the map we're talking about. Which one? <laughs> the, at the what? bottom right. Bottom right. Oh, that one. Okay, thank you. Because <laughs> there's so many edges. You can't say by the shorefish, because there there's two shorefish being used. And yeah. now the villagers have found the lumber camp on the left. Yeah. Well, archers out from Joan. Still, no fletching on those archers. No fletching, yeah. Really struggle against the And villagers. it's wheelbarrow vills. They're so quick. Good micro from Joan, though. And it's it's 32 versus 30 now with eco. And both players are fighting with a lot of their eco. What is going on here? It's you know, so messy. Now, you know what Kachan just spotted? He could only see one deer on his side. But that deer is the deer that Joan is taking. So if he's being, if he's paying attention, okay, these villagers are on gold right now. They're all and they're weak. super weak. Yeah. But he could also rush the food. I just don't know if food really matters. I, I just don't know what is the play here. Uh, villager sniped from Kachan well played, and that evens it out. Uh, the archers would need to get fletching ASAP mm -hmm. for Joan. And you get fletching, and then you you can actually have a chance here. And there it is. Who's ahead, Dave? Uh, definitely Kachan. It's just way more stable. Like, he's got his eco at home is safe. I yeah. know he's running around with a ton of villagers, but I, I feel like Jones had even more idle time than him. It's true. Yeah, it's a crazy thing about this rush is you can you can do more damage despite idling the six of your villagers at the start. And it's been more, too. I love the play from Kachan to wall in that one stone. He's being super oh, aggressive, but he's also... Towers, though. They're going, going down. down. Yeah. Good play from Joan to clear that up while Kachan's kind of distracted. And the micro from Joan is really good with the archers. And yep. with Fletching now, if you're just fighting with Vils... This could be a problem, man. Are we going to see another swing here? It's another swing in this amazing series. Namaste. Now, you can this make is... some eagles. That That's a good move. Feudal Age eagles for Kachan. This is so ridiculous. Yeah, I know. And, oh, Kachan's been taking the fish on the right. I didn't realize that. Also adding some farms. I, it's 17 on food for Kachan. That is a big difference with the 8 that Joan has. The micro with that villager to avoid getting killed by the archers yeah. is just stupid. It was almost a bait as well. Like, hey, attack me so I can get a couple extra hits with my eagles, please. Thanks. Yep. And the eagles are working, too. Oh. No, don't attack that one. Attack the weak one. It gets it. But oh, there's other boy. things he's focusing on now, right? He's He's really not sure where to be. So the Indian player took the deer, and the Inca player took the shorefish. <laughs> it's pretty funny. The resources look really, really good for Kachin, though. And now he's sending those fishermen back to the gold to maybe make a tower. I mean, he's got 500 yep. stone. He did, No, just fight. He could just fight. This is the thing. You can't stop to fight with your own vills unless you want to get slaughtered. So you stop to fight with your own vills. Oh, he's archers. Okay. Yeah, maybe the tower would have been the wiser move, Dave. This is so yeah. messy. Yeah, I think you need uh, you need a tower on that gold at some point, and he had 500. So why not just why not just make it? <laughs> that bill's still not dying. <laughs> Are you gonna castle drop or something in Castle Age? Like, why do you need 500 gold or 500 uh, stone? Yeah, and he also kind of let hit Joan know that he's over there, which I don't like. Like, why why do that? But the, the thing, resources though, yeah, for Kachan looking real good right now. Yeah, the the thing about this rush now. I I'm not a huge fan of tower rushing, but I am a huge fan of a huge fan, sorry, of Inca villagers and the Nobru rush. And I 
if I was ever up against a player who is way better than me, I would always do this strategy. And it's probably worked more than anything else. And so you will lose villagers. You will have idle time. But because you can do whatever you want with your villagers at home, you're probably going to go to Castle Age next. And if you go to or first, and if you get to Castle Age first, you can just go Eagles. Because the only counter to your villagers right now is archers. It's it's really good strat. And that's what we'll see, Dave. And I'm just really curious now, can Joan hold on? And, and well, if like, he does hold on, what does he do? Joan's base <clears throat> is looking looking way better than it did yeah. <laughs> about five minutes ago. Even on the left-hand side, he's playing super safe now. He's got a tower there. He's walled in his villagers. Wow, the quick He's hitting, he's hitting the resource. He's hitting the resources from Kachem with archers now. Will a single villager die here? One. One, yeah. Oh, is he going to trap him? He's, he is going to trap him. He is going to trap him! Oh. oh, no, the archer's getting hit by the tower and the eagles. This villager is worth throwing away if you can kill the archers, and all the archers go down. Katyan Khan maintains his eagle numbers. He still has golds. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Now, only one barracks, but I think we'll add the second here. Yeah, there it is, and Dave... He could castle drop him. He could send a real message to Joan. Yep, and I don't think Joan's going to be expecting him to be up this early. Joan's adding scouts. He's going feudal age scouts, so I think he knows he's... I actually believe he thinks Katyan is up, and he knows the only way he wins this is if he kills all the eagles before Katyan's in the next stage. It's not going to happen, though. He has armor. Oh. He's he has getting... attack. He's getting bloodlines, he's getting forging, and he's, coming, and he's, he's getting He's coming scale forward with farting. villagers right now. Is he going to castle drop right on that hill in front of the farms from Joan? I'd almost... Hmm. It seems perfect. <laughs> I mean, if he gets the eagle upgrades, the reality is... There's, Joan can't stop yeah, him. Yeah, Joan can't stop him. But fighting but before he's killing the Pop upgrades... Right now. Yeah. Okay, he fought before the upgrades. I don't like upgrades. that micro from Joan. That is... Oh! Uh, that is not great. All right, Doubt Castle. He deleted it though. He's Incas, so he still has the stone. Um, Dave, I think Kachan's throwing a little bit. He's fighting he threw before away quite eagle. a few eagles. Yeah. What? The like he could have wiped up all those archers as soon as he gets the upgrade. Is it a case of being so far ahead that you still win though? Could be that. I mean, Maybe, but now the scouts are looking pretty good in this situation because they're clearing up the villagers. Yeah. Doing damage to the eagles. They're they're singling what Kachan, what he got uh, a bit he, overconfident and, and there. That was such an easy castle placement. Yeah. If you just save your eagles until the upgrade. You have more mobility, there was no reason to fight there. He just probably feels like I'm gonna win this game. Yeah. Still I would say he has the lead because Kat Joan the Maid is so far from going to the next stage, but uh, it just makes me think it's a bit you know, too risky. Once Joan gets there, though, he can place a defensive castle right away. I wonder which could be good against any pressure from yeah. Joan. I wonder if... See, this is tough for Joan because you almost want to counter so Green no longer tries to pressure you, but you also need to have enough scouts. Oh, God! You need to have enough scouts and archers to stop this castle. That's inevitable. There it is. Yep. Here it comes. He's got an archer on top of the foundation. He's he's preemptively putting a tower there. The scouts are coming back as well. <laughs> oh my this god. Is... <laughs> oh man. I like how more bills are coming. Uh... I like how more bills are coming. Kachan wants to make sure he gets this up. Oh man. And he's he's fully gone into scouts now. Yeah. There's no way he's going no, to no way back anytime soon. Yeah. He's committed. Tower here from Kachim, which lot will of help him put the uh, the castle down. It's a lot of eagles, eagles for Kachan. They have full armor now, Dave. I think Plus with two, full armor. So do the villagers. Uh, There's still still eagles. Still eagles. We know the tower is going up for Kachan, and the scouts are gone. The archers will contribute very little here. It might just be a matter of Kachan bashing down that tower with the remaining villagers or eagles. He wants a castle. Yeah. He did not want a tower. And if he castles here, I mean, it just it eliminates yeah. so much of Joan's face. Thank you. I think Katyan had it right. I think he was so far ahead that he could afford to throw a bit there. Look how fast that went down. He doesn't need to do this. That's the thing. No. Two TCs in the back, too. So yeah. Zico's going to climb. Yeah. 
And another tower, okay. So yeah, booming behind it. I mean, kind of booming behind this. As much as you can boom with 13 on food. Did John sell like all of his stone? I think he might have to buy food. When you're desperate, you sell the stone, buy some food to get more scouts out maybe. It's just getting worse and worse and worse for Joan. Dude, this is the revenge pick, and I love that it's worked for Kachan. Yep. Sick. It's either Viper or Hera. I, I just... I've got stronger Hera vibes. And the GG is wow. called. And what's awesome about that for Kachan is he saves Japanese in his arsenal. So if Joan the Maid goes for hideout next, he's not at a disadvantage, and he could go for that sieve, which has been really common on that map. So well played from Kachan. Uh, what went wrong for Joan? He didn't. He didn't use his bonus. He yeah. did not use his sieve bonus. There's a reason people pick Indians on this map, and he let the Inca pick from Kachan get in his head, mm -hmm. and he didn't go up to the fish early. Yeah. Like I don't care if his eagle's there. I don't care if you think the the villager rush is coming. Go out to the fish, use your sieve bonus, get up earlier, get some scouts onto the field. There's a reason people pick Indians on this map. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it was it was that, and it's kind of hard to say how Indians fare against this strategy if we didn't see Joan go to the shore fish early. Like, that is possibly how you can beat Indians on slopes, and maybe this becomes some type of a meta. But we didn't see the Indian meta, like you said, Dave. And it was actually Kachan who collected more shorefish than, than uh, Joan did throughout this entire game. Now, I want to see how, how big a difference the food count was. Because do you remember that one point where I said Joan had five more vills? Mm -hmm. He had more villagers. But I think it was the amount of food. Yeah, 5,500 food for Kachan, and he should have way less as Incas. Gold difference is pretty huge uh, for Joan the Maid, but all the gold units he made would then... Oh, here. Here's our fancy scene. Uh, countered by archers, or eagles, god. And, oh, uh, wow. And a lot of stone. Joan, Joan had all, no stone collected, he so all it? of those towers, everything that I saw in the bank for him, he was buying. Huh. Wow. How much did he really... have? You said he had a lot, like, enough to I soon build a I... castle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I saw like I saw like three hundred. Yeah, okay, three something. So I figured he was on stone, but all right. Mm. Well, guys, one game. That's all Katja needs to win, and he will move on to the best of seven finals. When's that? Today. <laughs> that will be today as well. Uh, will it be high tide or will it be high doubt for Joan the Maid? If I were him, I think Joan has probably learned that. The earlier he can get an advantage, the better against Kachan. If games go super late against Kachan, Kachan might be the better player. So I think I go for high tide, which is more aggressive, and uh, make the moves early, Dave. Let's go. All right, everyone, welcome in. This is game number five, and it is high tide, and it is Japanese. Dave, how big was it that Kachan Khan saved this sieve? It's huge. Yep. A lot of other players might have picked Japanese on slopes, and we saw that play out yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, we saw some Indians, crazy games on this yeah, yesterday. Ex exactly. But Japanese on this are clearly the best Civ, I think, at the moment. The way the meta's developed yeah. throughout this tournament. Um, the good infantry, the cheaper mills and lumber camps, the good fish. Mm -hmm. Everything plays into your advantage here. Yeah, and I thought about this, because we think long and hard about settings and sieves and... We thought with Hidden Cup we didn't want people to be restricted in their choices because there's no sense in someone for to train for months and months and months to not be able to go for their strategy and show us what they're capable of. And I actually feel as though uh, if it was a mirror matchup any other Civ, this game would always end in 15 minutes. Because <laughs> like either they both go water, one person wins water and gets a huge advantage and it's over, or... You have one person go forward, which wouldn't be as possible, but slaughters a bunch of villagers. The other person uh, slaughters... I don't know where I'm going with this. The point is, let's just say this. I'm really enjoying the mirror matchups with Japanese. Because you know how you can go forward and go aggressive with towers and man-at-arms? The weakness of that is typically that you give up the fish. And so no players would go forward if they're going to give up the fish unless you're Japanese and have the armor. You got anything else to say? Do you know where you're going with the next sentence? You're you're here to help me, man. I got four <laughs> hours of sleep last night. <laughs> and I had to wake up two hours before the stream today. So, 
I, I just, I guess my question for you is, what do you think the play is going to be for Katjan? Do you think he plays meta water, or do you think he expects some type of a forward from Joan? I think you go. I think both players are going men at arms, and then uh, you add in the. It's whoever gets the fire ships out first, right? Yeah. Whoever maybe kills a fishing ship. The problem with Japanese is that your fishing ships are so beefy. True. It takes so long for them to go down. Are is the early fire ship even worth it? Like, One second. Um. Yeah, that's true. I I think it's a good point. I think if you're going fires. You almost need to be going two dock fires against someone going one dock. Yep. Yeah. And you see the villager coming out now for Kachan. Now, you know what was really cool about Joan's play against King Sancho? For me, when King Sancho went one dock fish... No, no, was it originally one dock? I think it was one dock fires. He thought that Joan, since Joan was going for man-at-arms, was going to be committing to one dock as well. But Joan made a switch behind the forward into going two dock fires and ended up getting a big lead there, which I think ended up giving him the eco lead, which won him that game five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I'm thinking it's going to be messy. And I don't know if that suits Kachan, who's really good with quick walls, or I, I don't know what skill set is better for this, but I, I think Joan the Maid, if he's playing Mirror, is really going to struggle against Kachan based on what we've seen in previous games. Oh, he's gonna have to make it messy. Yeah. Versus him. Scout war, nothing coming from that. Nothing doing. Yeah. All right. So good move from Kachan to realize the villager was probably around there. But what's important? Oh, oops. I just went to view lock. Whoops. Now, I, somebody br said this on Reddit last night. Uh, I would love to go view lock more frequently for the players, but it don't doesn't always work consistently. Yeah. And it's also, uh, it's almost like cheating in a way as well, if it did uh -oh, work consistently. Kachin, are you going to run into the TC? Ooh, he lost a little bit of HP there, Dave. So he is three less than Joan the Maid. But uh, my point was Kachan scouted the dock, and I don't know if Joan did. Yeah, Joan did not scout the dock for Kachan. He might just be assuming it's there. Three relics in the center. Lock Go ahead. A few times. Uh yesterday just to like try and figure out who the players are and it gives you a bit of a hint but like you said it just it doesn't track all the movements yeah yeah it it tends to just track what they might click if it's working properly but how they move their screen and all the all the little mannerisms of each player it does not show and wow the feudal times are identical and will we see the barracks for both there's the barracks for joan he's he's hoping and... to push in a deer go ahead dave Barracks for Kachan is probably these two villagers. No. See, this is the thing about high tide. Now he has a lot on he's wood. He's going at the for moment, a second dock. But he's he, going for a second dock. Yeah. So he, he could get punished really hard for this. So fascinating to me because that's true. But if he loses three villagers, but then kills the fishing ships. From Joan, it's not actually that bad. So you have and an advantage on land and water for one player. He hasn't he hasn't seen the barracks either with the scout. He saw villagers going up to gold, but if you're going on water, you're sending villagers out to gold as well. Ooh, true. So that's not even a tell. Usually that's a tell on land maps. The player's going men at arms. But now he's scouting around, he still doesn't see the barracks. Okay. He might pick off this vill though that's going out to dock for Joan the Maid. Yeah, so he if he thought it was going to be a two dock approach, because that's what he's doing, he should be checking. Joan is way worse with the scouting right now. Way worse with the scouting. Uh oh. Uh oh. He's going to be feudal age right as that villager. I think the vill will get walled in there. It does. And yeah. now the man at arms are on the way. Now you could argue that Katyan. He's been good with scouting the fact there's a villa out there to maybe dock that could even just be a repair villager, Dave, for the fire ships. And then the forward will come in, and here come the man at arms. I think it's a repair villa. That's pretty next level. I would assume so dock we've seen villager. The, we've seen the nerd walls from Katya. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think these men at arms are going to get an opportunity to hit any villagers, but what they can do is force idle time and force a response. Yep. Which will take his eye off water. I would love to see Joan fight this scout and, or use the scout to block any quick walls. How quick is Katyan going to be? Not quick enough. Not quick enough. That's one villager nope. down already. 
That's what Japanese, Japanese men do. at arms are. They just shred vills. <laughs> and he could lose more too. Oh, oh man! Oh my goodness! The gold back awkward here. It's getting for him now. Yep. It's getting real awkward, and Jones got a villager out to repair there, but I think he's gonna lose that first fire ship. Yep. Yeah. So Kachan will hold for now. He lost a vill. If he can wall out everything. Oh my goodness! Wait. Okay, so he will There's probably lose two here. I don't know how there was a hole. <laughs> yeah, will she die or, or what? Is she gonna die? Hello? Yeah, she delayed Doink. a little bit. Nice. nice. Will more die? This is so awkward. It's just the time you're spending quick walling. <laughs> it, it's, it's insane. Yeah. The amount of attention that it takes. All right. So, remember I mentioned you kill some villagers, but then you're behind in fish, and then the amount of eco be pretty close. So it's 28 to 29 right now. But a sneaky dock I from Joan the Maid. He's relocated two of his fishing ships. I think he's going to go mainly on land, though, Dave. If you're attacking... Oh, my oh, God! The oh, my God! Golden! Why are we looking at water? It's going to be a weak gate when it's up, though. No, you lady! Hello? You're no! <laughs> You're kidding me, Katyan. He gets away. He went from <laughs> hero to zero right there. It, that was the that was like the play of the semifinal and the fail of the semifinal in the Kachan's exact same moment. Katyan's gotta be so tilted, man. He even made that tower there in like a suboptimal position just to kill those men at arms yep. that were stuck in that position. Yep. And now the tower, like, what's the tower really doing in that position now, dude? Archers are on the way. So a and few archers. he still archers. hasn't lost his fish. Yeah. There's still two fishing ships for Joan. And is... Oh, Kachin's making fishing ships from two docks. And the fires are coming in now. Well, it is Japanese fishing ships. So it's unlikely that he would lose this. But now he's really distracted. And he doesn't know what to choose. And now he's got choose. archers. And the tower is out of position. Oh, man. This is how this is how too much micro can come back and, and bite you sometimes. It's true. You know? Yeah. It's true. Oh, look at the archer trying to block. All right, and uh, Joan has to micro away. I would like to see Joan send villagers, Dave, and tower that gold. Because it's vulnerable. Tower the gold in the wood line right here, where that arrow's in the ground would be perfect. Is he going to add a blacksmith side for fletching? Him. How confused do you think Kachan is right now? Because he, he thought he would cleaned up Joan on water. Now Joan has arrived on water. And now he he knows he needs to counter to archers somehow, but there's a lot of a them. Third, we're gonna see another dock here from Joan. Second dock. I think Joan should go farms. I think he should. I think he should commit to farm eco, because he has 300 food. Just get to Castellate with this army. It's already so difficult for Kachan. God, that tower is just so bad. Yeah. So bad. And it all stems from the fact that. You have those cutesy little plays, yeah. right? But if the plays <laughs> don't play off, or play yep. off, then you're in a terrible position, and the wood line for him is just not good. Yeah, and if he wants to add some skirms, now Joan is looping to the right side, so he'll have archers with fletching, four archers with fletching, and three Japanese men-at-arms. Dude, Kachan, it honestly feels like he's really, really behind right now. But that's if Joan does damage. There's like no defense for this except maybe yep. some quick walling. Funny there enough, is still a ton of fish. Still a ton there of fish, exactly. Still a lot of fish. Good demo shot from Joan on those two fire ships. He's repairing, but the villager is super weak. Yeah. A couple of those fire ships are super weak. Now the villagers. What are the quick walls like for Kachan? He gets it this time. Now the archers. Uh, they're actually they're gonna be fine, I believe, because there's no upgrades yet for Kachan. But they've got to walk around here. Skirmisher. And that, that wood line, <laughs> that wood line's an issue. <laughs> That's a big issue, dude. Yeah, I mean, he is Japanese, so it's cheap to make another lumber camp. He's got some wood villagers at uh, the back, but like, everything is just so awkward. Oh, man. Right now. There is a lot of food because of the fishing ships, though. And, and does Joan redock? Oh, he's redocking. Nice. Uh, Dave, I'm not even going to look right now because we have to look at this, but that is an important part of this. A villager goes down for Kachian. There's a hole. There's a hole. Through. And the man at arms are canceling out the skirmishers. Another oh villager God. goes down. It's a massacre. A it's a massacre. There's so many weak vills in there. No, don't separate the man at arms from the archers. Why are you doing that, Joan? He's fighting them with. 
Dude, it's a mob. It's a mob fight right now. It's a mob, but it's, it's such a bad play. I think you need to use the man-at-arms against the skirmishers, because now your army's countered. It was working so well. Why did he do that? I don't understand. I, I mean, at least he's running away with the archers now. But if he would have just used the man-at-arms against the skirms, he would have killed more villagers at the woodline. So idle time. Yeah. Look at that. There's still villagers just hanging out there. And he's on his way to Castle Age. So, Joan, yeah, I guess he just maybe wanted to go up and go in the nights. But maybe he got sick of microing it. <laughs> just like, <laughs> there's so much time. clicking. He was trying to do 20 other things. Yeah, maybe he just got sick of microing it. Oh, Green sees the dock. Kachan sees that redock from Joan. He was searching for it. I think he knows that Joan's up to the castle age. Yeah. And Kachan's going to be up soon, too. The fish. Yeah, the coming fish. Coming through here. Yeah, the fish paying off. And if Kachan sends a vill around to the north and docks up there, that's 350 food of Marlin. And it will be a lot more efficient than it is right now. Stable for Joan. He saw the skirmishers mm -hmm. going into a few nights. And he also knows that a lot of Kachan's villagers are super weak. So if he gets some knights in the eco, yeah, it's true. it'd be devastating. I, I think my concern for Joan is the lack of food income. He has seven on food. So he wants to go... Oh, he's adding scouts, actually. But it seems like he wants to go crossbow and knights. But I don't think he's even going to have the resources to get crossbow and bodkin and make a knight. So uh, he's got to balance that eco. And it's 16 on food for Kachan. So if he weathers the storm a little bit, I think he can afford to do more. It's making another dock. Like, if you're going docks too, you're going to have to get the war galley upgrade. Yeah. That's more food. He has to choose. Maybe it's Might just... Might catch these skirmishers snipe out, Snipe the fish. I don't know. Oh, yeah, he will. And Castle That's Age. the only land army right now for Kachan. Oh, no, he's got four archers. Yep. Okay. Okay, Kachan. Interesting he just dove in with the skirms. Maybe he thought he was going to lose them anyways. Oh my god, that's, that's a weak bill. <laughs> what a play! Got him! <laughs> oh, that's so good too, because I feel like this is Hera. Or well, wait a no, second. There's there's only four villagers in the TC, Woo! so he can he knows Woo! he can just run under there. Are you kidding me? The game sense from Joan! Yep. Only four bills. Surprise! Surprise! What a is he freaking gonna play. This? No, he can't. He killed a ton of bills though, Dave. He killed a ton Five of villagers. villagers. Yeah, that makes up for the fact that. He hasn't been fishing. That is, like, the the awareness to realize that you can run underneath the town center is insane. Yep. Because and now he can, that never can he happens. Sit, does he sit under this tower? He does. If he sits under the tower, all those villagers <laughs> have to run away. <laughs> oh my God! What's happening? Oh Roger man! Is falling apart here. Oh man! Uh, he might have the fish, but he does not have the lands control and, and right now. And two new docks now, and the war galley upgrade. He could afford it. How much can he get on water, Dave? If he if he swoops in with fires and takes out the fish, it's GG. It's over. Yeah. Oh my goodness. The score uh, is largely due to the fact that Kachan has the fishing ships. He does have farmers, he does have villagers still working on resources, and he does have his own crossbow now, with Bodkin, and good HP. A 57 population versus 50. Dave, I don't know how Katyan's affording this, but it's got to be because of the fishing ships. He's now going to get War Galley. He's, yeah, he's actually insane. still in this. He's going to fight back. I think the play for Joan is to run in and try and get the fish. True, yep. Because you know you have the land advantage on Eco for sure by this point. Yep. <laughs> you know you haven't lost a single villager in your base. Go and get his food income on the water. He's actually going for university right now, so oh, he's boy. prioritizing his military. Check this out on the left side of Joan's yep, base. Yep, the crossbow's coming through. Does he have town watch? Does Joan he, have town he watch? Does. He does. He sees see it. it. He sees it. Yep. That's, that's so good. Good reaction. So, so good. Also, ballistics on the way. Let's see how Kachan micros this. And Kachan's best move is to kill a few units, but then run back. Yep, good play from both players there. And good defense from Kachan on water. I don't see his fishing ships going down. He has so much on water still. Uh, yeah, Joan, Joan threw away um, two fires pretty carelessly there. Mm -hmm. And he's got a demo coming, though. He has a demo oh my coming. God. Two of those fires are super weak. I, I also love what Kachan has done. Good demo. Oh, sorry, I missed the demo there, Dave. But, oh! 
Katyan? Another good one for Katyan. Yeah, very good. But <laughs> like Joan thinks that the army for Katyan left. <laughs> yeah, it's still back. And there. he's coming back in. Yep. <laughs> yep. Can Katyan stabilize this and capitalize on the food he's getting from his I, fishing ships? I just every time I look at the food count for Joan, it's below ten. He's got five on food. I, I just. He's panic building a TC. It, it, he's reacting yeah. to these crossbows coming to the back of his base. I don't think Katyan is going to expect the fact that he has ballistics. And it's so yeah. unlike Joan, based on what we've seen, to not be able to transition his economy. So yep. unlike him. I'm so surprised. I talked about it when he was on his way to Castle Age, and he never fixed that issue. And he hasn't been able to take the fishing ships out for, for Katyan Khan, and it's looking increasingly likely now that the only, like, that Katyan Khan could win this game. Yep. The second TC, he's definitely stabilized. Yep. Yeah, and... Oh, now the army is 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 being wiped up, and mm -hmm. we saw... We saw what this could do, I think... I can't remember what, what set it was, but mm -hmm. we saw someone wipe up army and then completely come in and slaughter the bills. Yeah. As soon as that army advantage was in their favor. I mean, the bases are so close here. Yeah, it's, so we'll see if he can capitalize on that, but a Mangonel now yeah. for Khan, so that's going to be able to defend quite well. Yeah, if you're Katyan, you, you pretty much realize at this point, all right, well, I've lost villagers. It's been a messy game, but I have 400 food in the bank, and I can go three TC Vill production easily. So yep. uh, he also just took a huge trip into his opponent's economy and realized that the economy was not looking so hot. So uh, the siege defense is perfect, and for Joan the Maid, he hasn't been the biggest micro nerd. He's got to micro his heart out here, Dave. <gasps> Uh oh, these are a weak too. They're super weak. A nice attack round from Kachan, almost expecting the split too. It was close. Let's see if he tries it again. All right, Joan. Let's see here. No split that time. Okay. Great micro. Oh, this is so double mangonel what? now. You gotta get out of here. What a micro to not. Go oh no! In the predicted. Ouch. Oh no! He was playing with fire, and they're all dead. They're all dead. Oh, we were talking about swings. That's a pretty big one. 62 economy for Joan, a 55 for Kachan. Dude, yikes. But now you've got to make <laughs> more crossbows. Yeah, it just felt the pressure of being behind economically, I think, and tried to force the fight. I don't think that's a fight that many players should try and take there. I think it's better nope. to back up and make your own Maganel, so there's a reason he took it. And oh, some demos here from Katya. Not the best demos, but he still has fires to protect the fishing ships, and the fishing ships have made all the difference for Katya. And he had so many struggles on land. I still feel like it would have been very much like Joan to send forward villagers and tower once he saw Katya and Khan's first tower, but it didn't happen. He's such a map uh, control comes, player. Here comes the military. I don't even know if he'll get the siege workshop up in time. He's got to get it. Oh, he's got to get it. He can't do it. So now there's there's more crossbows for Katyan. There's a Maganel for Katyan and the sneaky another siege workshop. Sneaky fires, though. Sneaky fires are, are getting near the Wait fish. And there's two demo ships here. He could just wipe up his, his army on sea. He could. All right, uh, the demos are actually pretty bad. Kachan will have a little bit of time to maybe react to that. We'll this is not a great position for Kachan to push into. <laughs> like, if you see two archer ranges with garrison flags yeah. and a siege workshop there, you're like, no, 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 I'm going back. Yeah. Thanks. I like how we see this on hideout where the one person grabs a relic and then runs away. <laughs> it's like, no, my relic. And more fires for Kachan to stabilize. But it's less about the fishing ships now, Dave. I think it's more about the food he had from the fish to add all the mm -hmm. vills. Look at how many farms he has. Uh, but right now, Bosal and Horse Color are coming in for Joan. So he'll actually be ahead on eco upgrades. But maybe that explains his food problems. Does Khan not have a uh, Horse Color? Uh, look at this, Micro. <laughs> Keep in mind... That Joan has ballistics, and Katyan Khan does not have ballistics, and Katyan Khan killed a unit and didn't lose one. Here comes the Mangonel. Oh, yeah, immediate that reaction nice with the crossbows. Yeah. Katyan Khan's at, <laughs> such a fast player. Look at the houses from Joan up near his dock. <laughs> He's just slowly scouting the water. <laughs> that is really funny. It's a nice view there, man. I would yeah. live there too if I were a villager. Yep. Imp for Katyan. 
Imperial Age, are you kidding? He stabilized so well, wow. man. It's crazy. And again, it's another situation where we say, Joan, you've got to push, you've got to do damage. He's going to feel that urgency. He actually might not due to the score. Getting another relic with that monk? Yeah. A good prep late game. You see this monk coming back. Rip Friar Tuck there. He goes down, and I love and the, the castle. first castle of the game. First castle of the game, really good position, really nice and safe position. Yeah, I, I, I'm really, like, I'm, I'm feeling uh -oh. bad for Joan at the moment because he has to do so much to have a chance. But Dave, the micro! Nice. Very nice. That Magnano weak from the earlier attack round. Yep. Easier to take down, and he's going to run right into this castle. Yeah. But he, he realizes, and he backs away. Now, Dave, do you remember... The other Japanese war we saw, I forget who it was between. The Saladin. The and, Saladin uh, and Alaric? Um, Alaric. Alaric, yeah. okay. So one player was kind of in Jones' position, but they were behind to Imp, and they just went full elite skirm for a while and held on. And Yeah, that was Alaric. Yeah, so I, I wonder but he if had it's the, possible. He had the middle. That's a good point. He had the middle, whereas Saladin didn't. Yeah. And in this position, Gautian is faster to imp, and he has the middle, and he has the first castle of the game. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, and faster to Bracer. Also, there's just as many units here for Gautian, so if he gets Bracer in chemistry, he should be able to just match whatever Joe and the Maid has with numbers, and then out-tech. It's, it's really good unit awareness from Kachan. He realizes he can take a fight there, now he can't, he backs away, gets a few shots, backs away, getting upgrades now. Joan is nowhere close to him. No, he's not. And look at the micro from Kachan. The confidence. There's no need to do that, but nice he does it. Nice attack ground. That was a really good attack ground from Joan. From Joan, yeah. He knew the splits were coming. <laughs> look, look, the, did you Garrison see that? Garrisoning in the TC <laughs> and then teleporting out. So sick, man. Oh, man. So sick. Again, another dodge and another kill. Yeah, Kachan Khan is looking like he's prepped for the finals right now. This is insanity. He's playing so strong. Kachan Khan is actually the strongest hero, if all heroes were to fight. You saw my YouTube video on that, so that's fascinating that he's actually making it through, or it looks like he could. The resources are going up for Joan. They're going up, Dave. And can he get a big Good shot? Background. Yeah. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> of yeah. course not. He needs only Does skirms. Good? Does one of these players early tech into Onager? Because we saw that make a difference in the last Japanese mirror hmm. we were watching. Um, I guess the question is, do you need to? He's on the way to Imperial Age now. Yeah. I, I'm not so sure. It's a good point. Like, Imperial Age Japanese wars are actually pretty pretty boring <laughs> and it takes a long time to finish the opponent off there's a lot of relics coming second. in from green joan only has that one pile of gold. oh no he's got a neutral gold up top he's got that pile in his base yeah. and then three at the middle or sorry up top the rest are in the middle oh oh are you kidding me kachan kachan go down? it's like his brain just freezes when he's in a good position about to close out a game just threw away a trebuchet that happened in the the Bay game as well. Like he has all the tech in the world right now. He has chemistry. He has better skirms. I'm just really surprised he's not pushed forward or tried to raid or anything, Dave. He's just kind of sitting there. Well, he's bringing in his fourth relic. He's got middle control. Yeah. He's got a castle going down on that gold in the center. Yep. And the only golds now for Joan the Maid is the one in his base that he's taking and the one up north, which can probably be ranged by any galleons. Yeah, true. Yep, we see the micro here from Kachan, and uh, Joan the Maid will not resign early. <laughs> Joan the Maid is going to fight Dave, and I think Joan realizes he can maybe hold in the middle, which he already has done, and go for water. He's docking now. Yes, he'll probably go for Yasama Towers, too. Really slows down a Japanese war. Yeah. But Galleon now for Kachan. Kachan realizes the threat. There have been a lot of games where players have hit the Imperial Age without Bowsaw, but here's some stats for you. <laughs> There's been a lot of games this tournament. I think more than any tournament I've casted, actually. It's almost the norm. We saw that, I think we saw it three times in the final best of five of the quarterfinals. 
So he's going he's going for fire ships. Is he gonna get fast fire right away? Yeah, he's getting fast fire oh, right nice. away. He wants to clear him quick. It's, it's a bit of a worry though, because Kachan Khan, he knew that that was a vulnerable position, and he switched onto water with Galleons, so he's taking out some of the Vils. You're right, Dave. Maybe we see Onager. I think, especially for Joan. I know it's going to be tough against Katyan's Micro, but if there's one thing that can bring you back in a game where it looks like you don't have a ton of momentum right now, it, it might be Onager. But the population... Castle in the middle. It, the population's the close. I think it's wow. more so that Khan has the better position right now. Well, if Joan wants to get back on water with the castle there... This is the Death Star that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> if you fortify this middle position, he Green can always just run back. Yeah. And sit underneath that. Yep. Also really important that Kachan Khan snagged those relics that were in the center. There's only one there now. So we'll have the extra golds. He'll have the water. He'll have the relics as well. Now what the fishing ships are tanking damage in this fight. <laughs> they're coming into play, dude. Oh my god! These fishing ships. Oh yeah, my god! They're, they're rams! They're better than rams! Who needs capped ram when you have Japanese fishing ships? Are you kidding me? And the Four stupid plus three pierce armor. The stupid the thing about that is that Joan the Maid didn't realize. So he lost so many units because of that. Yep. Oh. And Joan the Maid still hasn't taken that relic in the middle. Yeah, even just, just one would be It's weird. Helpful. You're having gold issues. Like the camel's protecting it, man. Look at that. He's like, no, it's mine. It's so hard to use your gold in the Japanese war, though. The only thing would be Onager, Trebs, and then Samurai. You'll never see Cavalier switch. You actually rarely see Arbalest because everyone goes skirms. Fast fires are not doing anything. I'll Obviously, Navy much. then too. But yeah, just not working out for Joan right now. Not working out at all. I think Katyan Khan is just is just letting Joan know there's no way that you can come back into this game. I will lock down my base. I will lock down the middle where the extra golds are. I will take the relics and there's just I'm struggling to see what avenue Joan, Joan can take. Joan is going for Cap Ram and Tower. Okay. So he wants to push back on land, completely ignore water for the time being, and y you know. He's a little bit exposed here, Kachan, at the south of his base. True. If he wants to push in that way. Yeah. He's uh, also got a lot of pop invested. Both players are struggling to figure out where they should put their pop because they're both at 200. He's got a lot of pop invested on water. And in the sensor, there's a trebuchet from Joan right now. And he's taking good trade with the skirmishers. So we might we might see a situation where Kachan has too many galleons. Kind of like and on If he cup. doesn't delete them. Yeah. yeah. If he doesn't delete them, then... He could run into problems, and those galleons can't range that gold. It's like one tile too wow. far. Wow, you're right, Dave. How many galleons are there? 32 galleons, and now there's 41 skirmishers from Joan right now. And Joan has two more traps coming forward to take this castle out. There's the gold. He can take some gold in the middle. Huh, and I see Katya now going for Onager, Dave. But there is a chance that Joan could maybe go for light cap to counter that. Joan is actually pushing back. This is incredible. This is his only chance here, though. Yeah. If he loses this push, if he gets pushed back here, then he's losing everywhere. Yeah, you're right. He's repairing his trebs. He's sending in a ram. Uh, Kachan Khan's using fills against that. And repairing the treb. The castle goes down. Where are the honors? Ram's going to get it, right? Uh no, no! <laughs> <laughs> because of the repairs. Oh man. Oh. Well now. And now he's he's losing on skirm numbers. Yeah. yeah. He does have castle a lot now of food, in the though. south from Kachyan and tons of siege workshops and yep. more archer ranges to hold the fort there. Yeah. It, even just even the fact that Jones push is now stalling is bad. Because Katyan now realizes where he was weakest, and he's he's obviously going to deal with that. Oh my god, those trebs on the skirms, though. But yeah, he's researching uh, Onager, already completed that, sending the Onagers out. He's he's prepping another castle. He's getting the other relic, Dave! No! I think we're seeing the beginning of the end here. Yeah, Katyan's pretty maid, confident. Which is, which is really unfortunate, because like, some of the most entertaining games I've ever seen yep. from this guy. Yeah. Also played the player that stood out to me the most so far in Hidden Cup. You have to say that. If Kachan goes on to win the finals Those today... Those two traps! Yeah. 
Oh no. Yeah, dude, it's now he's he's winning nowhere. And he calls it. Joan the Maid taps out. Katyan Khan is going to the grand finals of Hidden Cup 3 winning. later today. That's a heartbreaker because Joan and and Yodit or Yeet, uh, they brought tremendous strategy to Hidden Cup. And they really open people's eyes as to what you can do in a hidden format. But I think the, the cream always rises to the top, man. The, the quality shown from Kachan throughout this whole tournament. He got through really difficult situations. He was able to beat the strategy from Joe and the Maid. And it's even more difficult for someone like Joe and the Maid to face someone like Kachan Khan in a best of seven. Uh, Kachan deserves it. What a series. I think this all stems back to that slopes game. I really do. I think, like, mm -hmm. he, he did his Civ draft planning around that. He did, or his Civ ban and his map draft planning around that. And planning around him having a worse Civ. And then he didn't utilize the uh, Indian bonus. And after that, like, how do, you, how do you come back from that? It's just so demoralizing to lose like that when you plan from the beginning. You know what else really bothers me? Joan the Maid had an awesome cup strategy, which worked yeah, tremendously well. And he didn't pick Cup as a home map. So, I, I just don't understand that. The Eldorado strat worked. Maybe he was really confident on High Tide. Maybe he felt like that worked better for him. But uh, either way, 4-1 to one is a pretty commanding victory there for Kachan. And Kachan moves on. Now, I want people to vote here. Because uh, I, I feel like I've been saying Kachan was Hera for a while. But Dave said, process of elimination, if that's Hera, there's no Viper in even the semifinals. And I don't know where Viper is. <laughs> there's Hera fanboys, there's Viper fanboys, there's Leary fanboys. We don't know who is who. But first, we are going to vote for Joan the Maid. A poll is going to pop up on our screen, and everyone who's watching right now can vote by typing a number in the chat. Uh, I personally think this is the max, Dave. I didn't see anything here today that makes me think otherwise. What about you? Uh, this is, after William being MBL, this is my most sure prediction. Okay. Is that I'm like 95% that this is the max. Okay. Although, it, if this is the max, he really improved his micro skills, uh, his execution skills. Like, it, it was insane, some of the moves he was pulling today. Okay, so I'm not seeing the poll yet. And... Okay, hold on. Uh, we're going to have to redo this one, Ducks. That's all right. I got it. I got it. I got it. I know how to do things. Just just redo this. This is not my fault. Just to be clear, this is Overlay Guy's fault. <laughs> Felix. <laughs> yep. Uh, this should be working next time. There we go. Okay, go ahead and vote. Sorry, guys. Uh, so far, we have uh, people voting for Hera for Joan the Maid. I'm all in on the max. It may be Tato. And Tato's going to be Maybe. someone that comes up later because I still feel like Saladin gave me more Tato vibes than Viper, but this Hidden Cup has been a treat, man. But yeah, Max Max had tremendous strategy. And if King Sancho was Leary or Viper, and then uh, Kachan Khan is Hera, he also had a very difficult bracket and he played beastly games. Lots of money on the line, too, for losing in the semifinals. You guys probably all saw the price pool split. Uh, the amount continues to go up. Thank you for the subs. Uh, can't say hello to everyone and thank everyone, but thank you all for the new Twitch Primes. Still gifted subs are coming in. You guys realize you don't have to do this. Thank you, uh, Bo. Okay, I actually can't say your name. <laughs> Expo. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, Expo. Thank you. Gus, thank you. Okay, Max, Doubt, and Tata. Wasn't Doubt in the top three on every freaking poll? Every. Every poll. All right. He's going to be the least guest player again. <laughs> well, well, remember, so right now we actually have it below the stream for people that might want to do this. There's an actual guessing competition. You can't guess Doubt for every single one. It's below the stream right now, and you can click it and go to the link. So when Doubt was guessed the least correctly in the previous Hidden Cup, it was not based on this. Like, this is all trolling from people, but it was based on the, the official form. Uh, and now we're going to do a poll for Kachan Khan. Dave, are you sticking with with what I think, that this is Hera, or do you think this could actually be Viper or Leary? I think it's Hera. I don't think Viper would go... I mean, I really don't think Viper would go Incas against Indians on the uh, on the slopes. Okay. I don't think he would have been 
um, maneuvered into picking Indians on the El Dorado either. And I don't think I don't. Why would Viper ban Britons? The biggest one is he banned islands. Yeah, that Britain's to me, island. yeah, that, no, that to Viper. me says it can't be Viper banning islands. I just, but again, you think. If this isn't Viper, are the other players Viper? I don't think Joe and the Maid was Viper. There's two more uh, yeah. that are playing in the next semifinal, and we'll I have seven games to find out. The only potential Viper candidate would be then Saladin. Saladin. And that would mean that Saladin was not playing up to Viper's full potential. I, I can agree. Say. I can agree with that. Every hidden cup, it's always about finding the Viper. Uh, Hera, 53% think it was him. 53% think Hera's moving on to Hidden Cup Finals, and I feel like that would have been a, a good prediction ahead of time that Hera could make it. He had the skill. Uh, doubt. <laughs> Viper micro, and then Doubt. Man. Doubt's gotten so much better. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I love Do Doubt. Quick walls. Yeah, guys, I love Doubt. All right? We all love Doubt. But there's no way that he was doing that, okay? There's no way the guy who said, Triple Ballistics, no need to Microman, in three times tech, force nothing, <laughs> would be out microing ballistics. Okay, that's an actual doubt quote. He's like, "Oh, triple ballistic, no need to micro." Yeah, there's no way. Okay, if you, if you guys have never seen him stream, all you have to do to understand this is watch him when he tries to quick wall a villager against a scout. He's like, "Oh, quick wall, quick wall." <laughs> <laughs> he might get one of them down. He might get one palisade yeah. down. I think people yeah. like Doubt because he's a massive troll and he's also super relatable he's in that so sense. He's so funny, man. Yeah, he's, he's super so 